Hello. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, what up? Hello, Leah. How's everybody doing today? Hello, Tay. Hello, M. Hello, Eliza. Hello, um. Ooh, hello, Turner. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Megan. Hello, Brad. Hello, Lou. Hello, Cody. Hello, Suzanne. Hello, Marjorie. Hello, Tiffany. Hello, Russell. Hello, Shell. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Oh my God, miss you so much. I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? You made it. Chicken and quaffles. Hello. Hello, hello, Melanie, Maddie. Yes. Chase, I'm so sorry. I don't invite people on here. And even if I wanted to, I can't hear you because I have my microphone plugged in. Hello, Kylie. Oh, the festival was so much fun. Well, hello, Evie. Here I am. Hello, Jess. Hello, Katie. <laughs> you went to Salem for the witch trials? Ooh, that's really cool. Hello, my friends. I miss you. The festival was super duper. Hello, Linda. Um, we had we got Uncle Matrix like a scooter because you know he can't. I, for those of you that don't know, uh, Uncle Matrix has a lot of physical issues, and the biggest one is that his Achilles is torn in his right foot, so he cannot walk very fast or well, and he can't stand for a long period of time. So we got him a little scooter like a mobility scooter. <laughs> so he was just zooming around the festival and I was like running around there. Hello, Barbara. Thank you. Um, and it was nice because it actually got us some like access to like the handicapped areas. Like we got on this cool little platform to watch from instead of having to like shove ourselves into a lot of the crowds. That was pretty cool. Ain't no shame in a scooter. He was having a great time zooming around because he was in no pain. He was just like zoom. <laughs> he actually has surgery tomorrow. Um, so I'm not sure when the next time I'm going to see you guys is. It all depends on how he's feeling after surgery. Um, because, you know, I have to be here to take care of him because he cannot walk, especially after surgery. So I'll have to help him, like, you know, get to the bathroom and I have to do everything. So um, it's a very, very long recovery for an Achilles surgery. Last time it was nine months to a year. Um, so hopefully this one will be better. And I'm not going to be offline that whole time. Like he'll get better gradually, but like a full recovery is like a year. Um, but yes, he's having surgery tomorrow. And hi, thank you. Uh, so when I'm on next is going to depend on like how he's feeling. And I might have to be on and then like tell you guys hold on and go help him with something and like come back in the middle of lives plus like everything i'm gonna have to do literally everything right he's not gonna be able to help me with everything with anything i'm editing a bunch of videos right now i'm excited for you to see your card <gasps> i can't wait to see my card but thank you <laughs> hello friends thank you cheryl thank you yes naked seriously right thank you jess did I check my P.O. box? I did check my P.O. box when I went to my P.O. box the other day and I had a couple of things and I um I did a video opening them and I'm trying to think because I feel like I did a couple videos recently with P.O. box stuff and there was like one or two things in there that didn't have any sort of note or anything and I have no idea who the things were from. When did it get there? Do you know? That was you! That's this right here. That's one of the things. I made a video opening stuff and this was in the video. This was like a week or two ago. I don't, you gotta look back. I don't remember when it was. And I was so excited about this. But I did not, um, Jackie, thank you so much for subscribing. I appreciate you so much. Um, 
But I didn't know who it was from, so I couldn't thank you. There was nothing in there that didn't say a, a name or anything. Thank you so much. It never has a note. I don't know. <laughs> but thank you so much. I'm, like, so excited about these. I have not had the time to open them yet and, like, look at them. Uncle Matrix is actually excited, too, because he's really into Viking stuff. And he's like, these look like Viking runes. <laughs> but I'm very excited. Thank you so, so much. And if you look back, you'll see me opening it in one of my videos. Yay! What's it about? So it's the Book of Runes because if you if you saw, remember I was talking about protection and I was saying how I'm going to get a protection rune tattooed um, on my on my ring finger here. And then we were talking about runes and this is all of the runes. These are like the stones and this is the book about them, which is very excited them. Very, I'm sorry, very excited, very exciting, very exciting. You do them weekly because I read on here, I didn't even know that you can like use these, um, not like tarot cards, but kind of like in that way as well. I didn't know that. That's what it, that's what it says at the book, on the book, on the back of the book. You have that one on your wrist. You have, al I'm getting algae. I'm going to get it on my, um, on over here on my ring finger. Thank you, Jen. You're welcome. Hello, hello, hello. I did not see the, the video of the bartender. Where did you get that? Someone please tell me. Wait, this? It was sent to me, to my P.O. box by um, one of our subscribers, Jenna. Where did you get this? Someone wants to know. Coco Putter, you have a little bit before stories. We just got on. We're going to chat for a little while before we start reading stories. Hello, Janelle. Hello, Janelle. And not that I'm saying send me presents, but people ask me all the time. Yes, if you want to send me anything, you can literally send me anything. A note, a card, a gift, whatever you want. I have a P.O. box and it's in the link in my bio. I only say that because people will see me put these videos and then they'll be like, I didn't know you had a P.O. box. They help a lot with her teenage expressions and what she's trying to tell me. Oh, that's very cool. Hey, Nurse Jen. Hello. Am I excited for Christmas? Not yet. Not yet. We're not, we're not to Christmas yet. I'm still in summer mode. <laughs> I am so not in fall yet. I was up all night and all day with sick kiddo. Oh, my God. Jess, why is your household literally always sick? What are you doing? Are you just eating germs for dinner? <laughs> what is going on over there? Are you guys okay? I'm still waiting for my, I can't wait for my card, by the way, Jess. Oh my God, I can't wait for my card. And I also am still, my daughter, can I just tell you something? That like big thing that you're making me, that you've been making for a long time, I told my daughter about it like when you first told me about it and she asks me all the time. She's like, did that person send that big thing yet? And I'm like, no, not yet. I don't know what it is yet. Hello, friends. Hello, hello. Eating germs for dinner. <laughs> I just ordered a bunch of Halloween candy for myself. I do have to say I do love me some candy corn. If freaking Justin would ever finish it. Is he in here? Justin, finish your shit up, man. We're very interested in what this is. Germs for dinner. Hey, kids, how about spaghetti with a side of germs? <laughs> Lady Raven. Nice, Alyssa. We will be reading stories in a little bit, Jackie. Right now we're in the chat portion. Your son got you sick? He's in the shower. No, Justin's in the shower. Mm. Candy corn. Yum, yum, yum. Do I take part in any Halloween stuff? Yes, my kids go trick-or-treating. I would still trick-or-treat if I could, just because it's fun. I really like to wear costumes, but I don't really do that anymore because I don't have anywhere to go in them because <laughs> I don't part. So I, I if I'm going to be honest with you guys, I went trick-or-treating until I was like 21. No joke. Like when I was in my older like high school and college, me and my boyfriend would dress up and go trick-or-treating. I would still trick-or-treat if I could. <laughs> but I can't. And then after that, Auntie M, thank you so much for subscribing. I'm like Auntie M, like Auntie M, like from uh, Dorothy from Wizard of Oz. 
And then, you know, I was in my party phase when I was younger. I would par- go out and drink and party. So then I would re- wear costumes for that. But now I don't drink or party. And I'm way too old to go trick-or-treating. So I go trick-or-treating with my kids. <laughs> Although my daughter is now, like, too cool for, like, a regular costume. Like, we went and she picked out this costume that's not really a costume. It was, like, like a cool goth-looking girl. Like, that's that's the costume. Hello, Lindsay. For the sub, do you pay one time or is it a monthly thing? You can pick, child be known. Uh, you can pick, uh, I think when you sign up for it, you could do auto renew so that it does it every month or you could just do one month. It's up to you. When I take my daughter, people think I'm a kid and give me candy too. Oh, I'm jealous. I'm so jealous. You've never been trick-or-treating. Spooky girl, thank you so much for subscribing. I appreciate all you guys who are subscribing. If any of you have stories that you would like me to share on your behalf, please let me know in the chat the name of them, and I will uh, write them down, and we will read them today. Hey, Margarita. Hello, Amber. First live. Whoop, whoop. What was my favorite drink? You mean when I used to drink alcoholic drinks? I got an email that said my subscription would be cheaper from now on. How can I support you? What do you mean, Monray? Because I changed my subscription my, my subscription price to two ninety nine. What do you mean? How can you support me? Yes, Auntie M. I saw you subscribing, and I was saying thank you. We should start a mom trick or treats with knickknacks and samples wearing costumes. Oh my god, that sounds so fun. He's having trouble catching the Skinwalker to put in your surprise. The Ouija board isn't working. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, if you send me some fucking bad shit, I swear we're not going to be friends anymore. I'm totally down. Let's do the trick-or-treating thing. Last year some adults were handing out beer to the parents while trick-or-treating. That's funny. I'm 21 and now I feel like I should trick-or-treat even though I haven't in six years. I'm good, Anna. There's two. One is dead prisoners trying to speak to me, and I convinced myself, oh, I don't know what you're talking about there, but I'm sure I'll get it. Oh, you extended yours. Okay, Auntie M. It said you were a new subscriber for some reason. Alyssa, woo! I did. I said it. I said the S. Walker word, guys. How can I support you? Meaning I still want to give you the old amount. Oh. I mean, if you check in the link in my bio, I do have a, you know, I do have like a cash. If you want to do that, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know how else to do it. I really, really appreciate that. That's so, so sweet that you want to support me that way. Loving the new price. The new price is so that I I put my subscription price down to the lowest that it can possibly go because now we are allowed to choose our own subscription price. Before we couldn't, it was just automatically set. But now we have the option to change it and I changed it to the lowest I could possibly change it because I want everybody to be able to be a subscriber if they want to be. I just want you guys to be included. Spooky gal. The UK is square and boring. I want to dress up and eat sugar for dinner. (laughs) That's amazing. Used to hand out shots. You can put tip option on your link tree. I do have a tip option, I think. And if I don't, my, my CA is there. My cash app is in there. You can, oh yes, you can get someone else's subscription. You can gift subscriptions as well, kind of like you do on Twitch. When you send a gifted subscription, um, it goes to like a random person that's in the live. But you can gift subscriptions as well, and that's and that money is still coming to me. So, how do people send money from Canada to the states? Like, do we have e-transfer? I have no idea. That's so fun, Alyssa. Now it should be easier to catch, you fucking bitch. Hello, Ashley. <laughs> you need a subscription? Get one, girlfriend or boyfriend or they friend. I don't want to assume your gender and I don't know. Oh, you can also buy my merch. You guys have all these great ideas. Great ideas. Just you know I don't mean that. I love you so much. I love you so much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like they friend. <laughs> they friend. Um, I feel like I have more to tell you. What else do I have to tell you? Oh my god! 
My little baby Natasha. Hey, Anne. My little baby Natasha, my little kitten. We had to take her to the vet today. Yes, the merch ships internationally. Yes. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. We had to take her to the vet today because she uh, had like all this gook in her eyes. And then one of her eyes was like so red. So we took her and he said he thinks that she either she has a viral thing, but he more likely thinks that she got scratched because he said that's what it's looking like. So she has a little cone on. And then he gave us this like gel stuff that we literally have to like hold. One of us has to hold her down and the other one has to like open her eyes and like put this gel on her actual eyeballs and then like let it be in there. And it's we just had to do it. And I'm like, I feel so bad doing it to her. This poor little baby. I want to cry. My little tiny baby. And it's going to be even harder because Uncle Matrix is getting surgery tomorrow. So oh, I don't know how he's going to help me. <laughs> The little baby cone of shame. I scratched my eye. I had to do that to myself. Oh my god, you did? My dog has had those types of eye drops before. <laughs> Bethany. <laughs> do both you and Uncle Matrix work from home? So Uncle Matrix doesn't currently work because of all of his physical things. He literally cannot be like on his feet. For very long at all um and that's what he did before he did like construction and stuff before so he hasn't worked in a long time but i actually really like that he doesn't work i love having him home <laughs> and he helps me with a bunch of stuff around the house he runs errands for me and he does whatever i need him to do and he's here with me all the time and yes i work from home because i do this for a living not lives obviously or else i'd be on live every day lives are just a fun thing for me to do and it's like a little bit of extra extra money on the side, but I make ads for TikTok through the TikTok Creative Challenge. Um, I do TikTok Shop now that makes me some money. I get money from just posting on TikTok and uh, and on Facebook and on YouTube and Instagram doesn't pay anything. So this is what I do. I do this stuff right now. I kind of, I do a bunch of little things and I do what I want and it's wonderful. I love my life. I didn't used to be like this. I did work a nine to five for 12 years and then I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> and I left. Multiple streams of income, guys. You have, I went live last week one day, Nina. Margarita, thank you so much for resubscribing. I'm a hustler. I'm a hustler, baby. <laughs> um. Hi, Mara. Mara, Mara, I was really sick and watched you for hours. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I brushed my teeth, so I'm here now. Hi. <laughs> Wish I could get more people to watch my TikTok. I'm not that interesting. Everyone's interesting. How can we reach out if we want to work with you with TikTok Shop? Well, you can't work with me personally with TikTok Shop because I don't have my own shop. I am a TikTok Shop like creator um, and anyone can do that you have to have 5,000 followers if you have 5,000 or more followers you can sign up to be a TikTok shop creator and you can literally like pick products and add them to your shop and make videos and make commission off them thank you persevere anyone with 5,000 followers make your own hours be your own boss yep yep I adore your engagement ring and wedding bands oh it's just an engagement ring because we're not married yet it, it just happens to have like two like lines to it but it's one ring but it does have a wedding ring that came with it it's like a set and it's kind of the same thing thank you so much it's a rainbow moonstone he did so good i'm literally obsessed with my ring and i'm so happy because i was really nervous for him to pick a ring out for me because like this i, I have to wear this forever and like even if i hated it i would wear it forever but i love it <laughs> so i'm very excited about it four to twelve Oof. Yuck, that really sucks. You started the teeth whitening today. They're already whiter. Yes, naked. I'm telling you, this the Guru Nanda teeth whitening is so good. It's in my TikTok shop if you want to go on my profile there and get it. But it's so, look at my teeth. Love it. Works really, really good. Hold on, I got to catch up. I got my first job at 12 and then worked nonstop until I was 29. And then what? Oh my goodness. 
Juanita, you're in the hospital in ICU with pneumonia. Sending you so much love, love and healing energy. I hope you feel better so, so soon. Thank you, thank you. It's a rainbow moonstone. Yes, teeth whitening. It's Guru Nanda. You did that too and your teeth are whiter? Yes. I can pop it up real quick for you guys, but I have to talk about it while I pop it up. Oh, they're sold out? No fucking way. We sold them out, guys. Hold on, I'm still here. I'm still here. Oh my God, you're right. We sold them out, they're sold out. Okay, when they're not sold out, I'll make another video and hopefully they won't be sold out next time I'm on live and I can pop them up for you. Because last time I did a live and I talked about them and I showed them and I popped it up for like 15 minutes and we sold 22 of you guys bought them. <laughs> oh, they sell them at Walmart too? Okay, okay, okay. I do the mint pulling and my teeth are bright white. Oh, I So I have, I have the Guru Nanda pulling oil, coconut and mint, and I haven't done it yet. I got this before I even got the whitening strips, and I haven't done it yet or made a video about it because I'm honestly really scared that it's going to make me want to vomit because I hear that from a lot of people. <laughs> I, I use the Dr. Watson's natural toothpaste. No, I use, for my toothpaste, I use Dr. Bronner's um, fluoride-free peppermint toothpaste. Thank you, Casey. An acting job. I was an outdoor amphitheater Broadway play. What? What did you play as? I got it. I want to get the oil pulling too. The oil pulling is in my TikTok shop. Um, you can get it through there if you want to, or you can get it from wherever else. What if glitches in the matrix are people from my future messing with our present? Perhaps. It's not bad at all. I'm so scared. Isn't it really good for you just in general? Because doesn't it get like bacteria and stuff out and it really helps with your health overall, right? Please do the oil and post it. I want to order it. You can still order it even though I haven't posted a video about it. It's in my TikTok shop. <clears throat> Wait, you know what? I can probably add I can probably add that really quick for you. I'm still here. I'll just put it up for a minute. Here it is, right here. All right, I'm just going to leave this up for a minute, but it's up right now. This is the oil pulling, the pulling oil, the coconut and mint for any of you that were asking about it. Um, why doesn't your TikTok shop work for me? Is it a UK thing? Because TikTok shop is only available in the US right now. My friends, I'm so sorry, in the UK and Australia and Canada. Hi, I missed you too, Rote. I've been doing oil pulling the past few weeks with normal coconut oil. It's not bad. It's not. I'm so scared. I played five different characters. I was a Swiss Native American pilgrim pioneer and angel kid. That is so cool, Jess. Do you have any videos of your performances? Because I would love to see one if you want to send it. Do you do that in the shower? No, you just do it whenever. Like you literally put it in your mouth and then you like swish it around in your mouth for I don't know how long. It says try to work up to 10 minutes. Um... Also, I don't know about this one, but I know with coconut oil and stuff, do not spit it in the sink. You have to spit it in the trash can because it can clog up your sink. I don't know if it's the same with this one because, again, I haven't used it. I haven't used this one yet. Why is it called pulling? Because I think when you're – Katie Jo! I think when you're, like, swishing it around in your mouth, it's pulling all the things out. Do you understand? Like, it's pulling – the things out. It's supposed to be really, really good for your oral health, dental health. It's supposed to be really, really good in general for your health. Yes, we're going to read stories tonight in a little bit. <clears throat> but this is it. I have it pinned for whoever was asking. It's here. I'm going to take it down in a minute because if I don't constantly talk about a product on live while I'm showing it, then they give me a violation. <laughs> <clears throat> My mom probably has them. It was the best summer ever. That's how I was able to buy my first car. Wow, that is so cool. Just ordered from you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Katie Joe, my friend. 
how did the rest of your live go? Because I went in there and I had you I had your live open, but I had the sound turned down because I was with my daughter and we were hanging out. We were eating dinner, me and her. We were chatting. We were watching TV together. It was like our last night together because Uncle Matrix is having surgery tomorrow and then I'm not going to see her for like a, a week because I have to like take care of him and stuff. So I was hanging out with her and then I was putting her to bed and it was like a whole thing. So I had you open and I was like tapping the screen and stuff. <laughs> But I didn't get to actually like hear or hang out. But I hope you had a really good live. And if anybody um, likes, uh, if anybody likes haunted shit, which you do, if you're here, you do. Katie Joe, pin yourself real quick. Uh, Katie Joe goes. She's one of my moderators, and she likes to go live some uh, a lot of times with some of her friends, and she goes live from haunted places. Um, and it's really fun. So go join her if you want. If you want to follow her because of that. I feel like her live was good, lots of action. Oh man, I missed it. She's right there if you wanna follow her. Um, I'm just gonna say this one more time and then I'm gonna take this down because I don't wanna talk about this the whole time because my live is not a, <laughs> this is not what my live's about, but this is the Guru Nanda pulling oil, coconut and mint. If anyone's interested in oil pulling, I have not tried it myself yet, but some guys were talking, some people were asking about it and I'm showing it and it's from TikTok shop and I have it pinned over here in this little shopping cart. You can get it if you want. I'm gonna leave it up for like two more minutes. So I'm gonna take it down. You're gonna start doing it once a week. One story has been coming back to you. Ooh, Katie Jo is brave. She is brave. Oh my God, Gomez. Anti Matrix, as soon as my hubby hears you, he says, hi. <laughs> That's so funny. Hello, mama. The teeth whitening strips are sold out right now. So as soon as they are not sold out, I will show it to you guys. It's better if it's done in your regular normal dental hygiene routine. Yes, you should be doing it every day. Yes, I just, I'm scared to start it. I'm very scared. You should be doing this every day as part of your like dental hygiene routine. That is the truth. Um, you put it in your mouth and you swish it around for like, it says to try it at least two minutes um, and try to work up to 10 minutes and then spit it out and rinse your mouth out. Do not swallow it. Always brush your teeth after using it and spit it. I don't know if it's true with this one, but most of them spit it into the garbage, not the sink. It can like fuck your sink up. Saturday is World Card Making Day. I'm teaching a live class. <gasps> that is really cool, Jess. That is so, so cool. Hey, Quickster. I pull while I make breakfast for the kids. It makes it fun because I have to pantomime the kids. Wait, what does that mean? I heard that is really good stuff, this stuff. Oh, you have to listen better. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, I'm going to take this down now, but it's still in my TikTok shop. You can always go on my profile and go, uh, go see it. But we're going to remove this so I don't get in trouble because I'm not talking about it the whole fucking time. It all should also help remineralize. Thank you. Oh, you have to make hand signals instead of talking. <laughs> What's everywhere on your FYP? That, the thing I just put up? I still need to use mine. They're sitting by my sink. Oh, the whitening strips? A couple people in here have said that they've used them and they've, they're working good. And they worked on me. Gets rid of cavities too. It also helps remineralize small cavities. Like it can fix, like you don't have to go get your cavity drilled. Like it'll fix it. Because if so, I have a cavity here. <laughs> And it doesn't really hurt, but I see it. And it hurts sometimes. And I've been putting off going to the dentist. So maybe I'll just start oil pilling and it'll fix my cavity. Mm, natural shit for the win. We're talking about oil pulling. Tracy, thank you. Guys. Uh, uh, hold on. I had a stain on one tooth that it's gone. Thank you, Tracy. I didn't even know that I had that up as a goal. I forgot to put a gift goal up and it just put that up for me and you guys are fucking killing it anyway for me. So thank you so much. My oldest boy is about to have some dental work done, teeth pulled and spacers. Ooh. Might try this because it's impossible to see a dentist in the UK. Why? 
Thank you, Lil Sarge. The strips made a huge difference in just one session, not even the express ones. Yes. Uh, guys, as soon as these strips are like back in stock, I'm going to post another video about it because everyone seems to love them. And TM, that's okay, my dear. You should get the whole kit number two, fix my gums and got rid of gingivitis and a cavity. <gasps> I do oil pulling while prepping my dog's food because I give them coconut oil. You haven't missed any stories, Amanda. It's so fucking hot here. My coconut oil is liquid at room temperature. Oh, my God. Thank Little Sarge, thank you so much. My goodness. Apparently, Jess ruined my surprise by explaining the dilemma I'm <laughs> having catching something. <laughs> Apparently, your Ouija board is not working, Justin. <laughs> oh, my God. Auntie M, I love that you've been stalking me. I love it. Don't put off going to the dentist. Try to avoid root canals. I've had three root canals. I know the deal. I honestly don't think root canals are that bad. They're just more inconvenient. Because you have to go like two or three times to the dentist. I feel bad for him. He's getting his teeth pulled right before trick or treat. Oh, you're getting these ACP once they're in stock. Woo! I'll make sure I put out a video about it. The name of the strips, they are, uh, they're Guru Nanda whitening strips. Guru, G-U-R-U. Nanda, N-A-N-D-A. Suspense, thank you so much for subscribing. Oh my God, wait guys, we're in a sub wave. We're in a sub wave. We need three more subscribers in the next 14 minutes and 46 seconds. Three more subscribers. Subscribe, uh, subscriptions are only $2.99 right now. You can gift a subscription too if you already have one if you want to join the sub wave. I definitely need the info on this stuff. I have three strips left. My teeth are... A shade or two whiter, yes! Hello, Esther. Oh my God, Crunchy, that is terrible. This The whitening strips are only like $10. They're only like 10 bucks, but they're out of stock right now. Oh, you have a voodoo witch that you're working with? That's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, your daughter had a baby root canal. Hey, Bubba's. And more money, That's well, that's true. Unless, I mean, my insurance is... My insurance is great, but it's it's not bad. Tiffany, thank you. Sherry, thank you so much for subscribing. They didn't numb before the shot. Oh my god, TikTok still won't let you gift subscriptions. That is terrible. I am doing glitch story time in a little bit. I'll try when they're back. Yes, 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 yes. Your sub badge is right there. I'm using a new mascara. I'm using my old mascara. It's just that I stopped using mascara because I don't wear any other makeup, right? Guys, we need two more subscriptions in the next 13 minutes for the subwave. For the subwave. If you subscribe, you get... Oh, Lil Sarge, thank you so much for subscribing. One more. We need one more. If you subscribe, you get a bunch of fun emotes. Kaya, thank you for resubscribing. You did it. Woo! Oh my God, I love it, I love it, I love it. The K Monique, thank you so much for subscribing. I appreciate you guys so much. New subscribers get... Um, if you have a story and you're a new subscriber, please let me know and I will read your story today um my skincare routine i could tell it to you if you want um you get a bunch of fun emotes you get tiffany thank you so much for sending a subscription tt thank you for subscribing i think that's that was the subscription that was sent i've got a ghost in my room he keeps jumping on my bed what who pinned that <laughs> These are all the emotes you can use if you're a subscriber. You get a special role in the Discord. You need my skincare routine. What do the subs get apart from shit scared at night? <laughs> if they have a story, they get a story read right now. You get all these fun little emotes that you can use of me in the chat. Um, you get a badge next to your name. And you get a special subscriber role in the Discord and access to the sub-only chat in Discord. But everybody is 
Uh, everybody is welcome in the Discord, by the way. If you want to join us in Discord, please do. We have like 1,400 members in Discord so far. Click on the link in my bio and it'll say like join Discord. There's like a bunch of links. Link in the bio goes to a bunch of links, like a link tree, basically. Um, and you can join us. Come join. Everyone is welcome. And you get to be awesome. That's very, very true. Oh, anyway, my eyelashes. Hold on. Back to my eyelashes. So I don't wear any makeup, right? And the only thing I was wearing was mascara because my eyelashes, not that they're sh very short, but they are um, light, right? So, uh, and then I went camping and so I didn't, Mama, thank you so much for subscribing. I went camping so I didn't um, wear mascara at all for like the whole week that I was camping. Then when I got back, I was like, I'm gonna just stop wearing mascara. And so I did, cause you know, I'm going more and more natural. Um, and I did that for about a month, maybe six weeks. And then, uh, I don't know. I just really, I put it, oh, I put it on one day for something. I, I needed to like extra dress up for something and I put on mascara and then I was like, I kind of miss having my, like them looking longer, my eyelashes. So it's like the most natural mascara I can find. It's Ilia mascara. I-L-I-A is like the brand. But um, this is not natural. You couldn't really, thank you. I appreciate it. I just wish they were darker natural and then I think I'd be okay with it, you know? I'd really recommend a brown mascara for a softer natural look you switched for fall. I never actually tried a brown mascara. I never knew what, I never knew like what it would look like. I don't know why. I was like, why do you even wear brown? Why wouldn't you wear black? I don't know why in my brain. <gasps> Maddie McFly, thank you so much, a galaxy. <laughs> thank you. Oh my goodness, I appreciate you so much. I need to get this out to all you glitches. If you feel like you have a gift, you do. Yes. Love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Lash tint. I think I'm scared of those. I think they're like illegal here. Donna, thank you so much for subscribing. I'm so excited for you subbing too. Mama, thank you so much for the gift. Thank you. My skin looks amazing today. Guys. Do I accidentally have, <laughs> Jess loves a good galaxy. Do I accidentally have a filter on? We are all connected. You know what? I don't have a filter on. You know what it is? It's fucking, I've been using these oils. Do you want me to tell you what I've been doing? <laughs> BU Organics is amazing. Mascara. Hi, hi, hi. My SPN marathon is going great. Do you guys want me to do you guys want me to go over my skincare right now because I've added all these oils that I've been like making videos about it? I I I feel like I have to check and make sure it's the lighting makes me look better all the time. All right, let me get everything. Hold on. Hold on, please. Hold on, I have to come back. I can't I can't carry everything. Give me one second. One second. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. And as I'm talking about these, I will pop them in here. Just in case, hold on, I'm still here. I'm just popping these oils in here that I use into the little TikTok shop thing. This one, this one, and where are you? This one, that one, that one, and that one. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about what I'm doing for my skincare. I really feel like I need to just make sure. 
Oh good, no, I don't have any filters on. Okay, so my current routine is this. At night, I do, I double cleanse at night. So first I do an oil cleanser. The one that I'm using is by Karuna. I don't know if you can see this. It's Karuna, that's the one that I use right now. So we do an oil cleanse and then I do a regular cleanse and the regular cleanser I use is also by Karuna. I get these at Whole Foods. Um, so I do oil cleanser, then I do regular cleanser. Then I put on this lovely baby that I have been promoting so much, castor oil, black castor oil, which I've linked down here in my little TikTok shop thing. Castor oil, it's good for so many things, but I like literally lather my entire face in castor oil. Katie Jo, thank you for the galaxy. Thank you so, so much. I love you. Mimi, it's a part of my job, girl. Support the hustle. Don't be mad about it. And I'm showing you this stuff because someone was asking about my skincare. Um, I use castor oil. It's good for so many things. So I literally like put so much all over my entire face. I concentrate also like more on my eyelashes because I'm trying to also grow my eyelashes. And I also put some of this, uh, a couple drops in my belly button at night and I rub, rub them around on my belly button because it's good for a lot of things. Um, so that's at night. That's all I've been doing at night because the castor oil is like thick, right? So I put a lot of it on and I feel like I don't want to put anything on top of it. Um, and it needs to sit there and soak in really nice. So I do the oil cleanser and the regular cleanser and then the castor oil at night, which is down here. Thank you for everyone who's supporting me. I love you so much. Then in the morning, I do just a regular cleanser. You don't. Ha I feel like you don't have to cleanse again in the morning, but I always feel like when I wake up, it makes me feel really good to like brush my teeth. I immediately brush my teeth and wash my face. It just makes me feel better. I do a regular cleanser only in the morning. And then this is where I do a million things. Ready? Then first I do rosehip oil. This is also from TikTok shop and it's also linked over here. Rosehip oil is a natural <sighs> retinoid. Is that what it's called? It does the same thing like a retinoid cream does, right? It like tightens and it, your skin and it like, um, minimizes your pores and stuff like that. And also rosehip oil helps other things to get soaked into your skin. So I wash my face and first I do rosehip oil because I want it to help the other things get soaked into my skin, rosehip oil. Then after rosehip oil, I do, where is it? I do this vitamin A serum by Mad Hippie. I get this at Whole Foods. And then after that, I do vitamin C serum by Mad Hippie. I also get this at Whole Foods. Um, and then I do a little cream also by Mad Hippie. It's this face cream right here. Same place I get this at Whole Foods. And then I put a little bit of this. I don't really think I need this. But I'm in the I'm I'm use it so, uh, it's like a little eye cream. It's yes to avocado eye cream. That's what this is. Um, <laughs> that's everything on my face. And then I started, and I don't know if this, this is not helping yet. I heard it takes a while for this to help, but I started. Uh, thank you, Queen. Putting pumpkin seed oil. Massaging the ladies every morning with pumpkin seed oil because I have heard and saw many TikToks that apparently it helps them to lift somehow. Apparently it like tightens things and like, I don't know how, I don't know. I can't tell you the science, but you know what? I have it, why not try it? And this is also, Maddie, thank you so much for subscribing. This is also from TikTok shop and linked over there. So down there in the products, I have the pumpkin oil linked, pumpkin seed oil linked, the rosehip oil linked, and the castor oil linked. So those, that's my skincare. This is what my skin looks like right now. Obviously, it looks better in the lighting. Everybody looks better with good lighting. But I do think it looks really nice. <laughs> I do pass myself in the mirror a lot. <gasps> Maddie, thank you so much. Ah, thank you for the galaxy. You guys are killing it. Thank you so much. Um, does it need a carrier oil? It does not need a carrier oil. These things are meant to go right on your parts. These don't need carrier oils. The ones that I have here don't need them. Um, 
I do pass myself in the mirror a lot. <laughs> I don't know if you guys do this, but literally, I pass myself in the mirror a lot. And I'm like, oh, I literally will go, oh my God, I'm so pretty. <laughs> I do it all the time. Oh my God, Maddie. Oh, thank you for the galaxy. Oh my God, thank you. So generous. Um, I literally do it all the time and you do it too. Yes, I love it. Maddie, oh my God, thank you. Holy shit. Um, new gift goal, I'll have to do that in one second. Holy shit, Maddie, thank you. On fire. I do do that all the time. Uncle Matrix will laugh at me because he'll like pass me and I'll be like, oh my God, I'm just, why am I so pretty? And he'll just laugh hysterically at me. Um, you like the cauldron? What is that? But yes, so that's what I do. I do at night, I do the oil oil cleanser, then the regular cleanser, and then I do the castor oil, really get it in there, and in my belly button. And then in the morning I do the regular cleanser, and then I do rosehip oil, vitamin A, vitamin C, face cream, eye cream, and pumpkin seed oil on the ladies. And no, it doesn't take long at all. You're pinning right now, Jess. Guys, what cauldron are you talking about? Did I miss a cauldron? Did I miss a gift? But that's all the things. I'm going to leave this up for one more second because I have to take it down if I'm not talking about it. So, um, I'm doing beauty magic. Thank you. I am doing beauty magic. One of the gifts. Ah! It was right before a galaxy. Oh, I missed it. Um, but yes, they're right here. Uh, if you want to check it out really quick, you're very welcome. I was just reading the comments. I'm sorry. Oh, that's it. Oh my God. It's so cute. Maybe I'll put that as the, as the goal. I have to put a gift goal. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to put all this back guys to keep on tapping the screen because when we get to a hundred thousand likes, we will start reading stories. Maddie, thank you for the galaxy. Just try like going out and back in maybe. Oh my God, Maddie. I don't even know what to do. Are you crazy? <laughs> thank you so much. Oh my goodness, for your generosity. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna leave these products up for one second while I put them away and then I'm taking them down. So if you want either the pumpkin seed oil for your boobs, <laughs> the rose oil or the, or the castor oil, check them out in the little shopping cart down there. I'll be right back. I love you so much. Hold on. I got some oil on my on my thang here. Got some oil on my thang here. Whew. Okay. It's not letting you pin either. Guys, maybe it's not letting you pin. Oh no. I was gonna say maybe it's not letting you pin because I have the products pinned. But I'm going to, all right, I'm going to take these down in 20 seconds. You have 20 more seconds, then I'm going to take those down. Maybe it has to do with the fact that the product is pinned. So maybe as soon as I take it down in like 10 more seconds, maybe you'll be able to pin. I feel out of breath because I, I'm glad you subscribed here too, Maddie. We didn't even start reading stories yet. Have you been to my page before? Do you know what this is even all about? I'm so out of breath from like talking so much. Has that ever happened to you guys? I get like excited about something and I'm like, I talk so much that I'm, I can't breathe. <laughs> we have to hit 100,000 likes to start reading stories. So keep tapping the screen. Yes. And then you have to breathe for five minutes. Yes. <laughs> 
your whole life story. <laughs> Maddie. Oh my God. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. My goodness. Oh, let me change my gift goal, by the way. Speaking of cauldrons. Oh, wait, you know what? Mr. Orange came up and you know I got to do Mr. Orange. You know I love me some Mr. Orange and the lemon guy. Good to see you too. Maddie, I'm calling you Galaxy from now on. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one who can't breathe. Nope, that's me. All right, I'm going to write down gift because I do have to pick one for the gift goal. Do any of my new subscribers uh, have a story that they'd like to share? I like how you say orange. How does everyone else say orange? Yay, me. How, wait, how do you say orange? How do you guys say orange? Or orange. Oh, so you like you say orange. That's a lot of work for my mouth. That's like a lot of work for my mouth. 100K! Yes, you guys are the coolest in the world. Oh, shit. I have to take these products down before I get in trouble. All right. I'm taking them down. 10 seconds. I'm taking down the products. So buy if you want to. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one. Vivian, why do I keep getting you selling stuff instead of the stories? If you're talking about on your FYP, it is because TikTok is pushing TikTok shop videos and TikTok is not pushing my story videos. Actually, every time I post a video of a story, uh, TikTok uh, holds it for review and doesn't push it out to you guys for two to five hours, depending on the day. Is my newest story up? Speaking of that, because I posted it about two, at least two hours ago. Is my new one up? Alyssa, thank you so much for subscribing. I appreciate you. If you want to see my story videos, you're going to have to probably go directly to my page. Um, the last one you saw was an update. No, I posted a story about like two hours ago. It's not up yet. Hopefully it'll be up soon. So I am posting my story content and other weird videos and stuff like that. I am posting it. Um, but TikTok is not pushing it out. They are pushing TikTok shop videos because it makes them money, which, you know, makes sense. Um, makes sense for them. You get my story videos over the TikTok shop videos? Yes. So I promise you I am posting them. You may just have to go to my page to see them. Oh, I do, in fact, have two stories I sent to your email. One's more ghost and one's glitchy. Okay, can you tell me the name of them, uh, of whichever one you want me to share? Like whatever you put in the um, in the subject line so that I can find it in my email. I've been in so many of your stories in other videos. Yes! You got a couple stories on your videos? Do you want? Do you guys want a ghost or a glitch story? Ghost, glitch, glitch. Oh, man, this is close. How about, how about we just read both? How about we'll just do both? You know I spoil you guys. <laughs> so just give me the, like, the first part of your email address or something so that I can find them. We'll just do both. Ha, la, la. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, thank you. Ha, la, 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 la. Um, mods, can you just pay attention if she or he or they, I'm so sorry, post the first part of their email address or whatever um, and pin it for me so I can see? Because <laughs> I'm going to do my little hello spiel and then we will start picking stories and reading. I'm dying at you making that noise. What noise did I make? Oh, there it is. Glitches. I can reverse time. And I convinced myself my mom had died. I can reverse time. Wow. 
Whoa, what did I just do, my friends? Hold on a second. Got you. Okay, I got you. So I'll just read this one and then I'll, I'll just find your other story with this email address. You shall be the first one. Thank you so much. Oh my God, Mama T. Mama T. Her whole email came through? What the? What the fuck? Um, oh my God, friends. Thank you so much for all the gifts tonight. You guys are being so super generous and I really, really appreciate it. So, hello and welcome. My name is Jess. People call me Anti-Matrix, and I read your weird and unexplainable stories, if you don't know me already. Um, in this room, at every 100,000 likes and at every gift goal, we pick a random person out of the studio audience, and we read their story specifically. If we do not have one ready to go in here, I'll just pick a random story. Um, after each story, we vote Happy face and sad face, little poll if we like the story or not. Um, if you want, oh, so yes, so the likes and the gifts, so make sure that you are tapping the screen to send likes. They are free, they're fun, it's helpful for me, it's helpful for you. We just hit that other gift goal, holy shit, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Um, and if you can send gifts, please send gifts, but only if you are able and only if you want to. They are not required. Another way to get your story read right now, or if you just want to support, is to subscribe to the live. I have just was able to change the sub price and I've changed it to the cheapest that I can. So subscribing is now only $2.99, which is awesome. You can be part of the sub squad for super duper cheap um, for less than a cup of coffee. You can click the little uh, star, I think it's down here somewhere, to subscribe. If you subscribe, you get your story read right now. If you have one, you do not need a story. You can just subscribe for support. You get access, uh, you get the little badge next to your name. You get 15 emotes, most of which are my cute little face that you can use in the chat that are for subscribers only. Did you guys get a Subwave emote? A new Subwave emote because we just did the Subwave before? Um, what else do you get? Sarah, thank you so much for subscribing. You got me singing like that. <laughs> um, oh, you get a special subscriber role in my Discord, and you get access to the sub-only chat in Discord. Speaking of Discord, everyone is welcome um, into the Discord. Please come in. We have about 1,400, I think more than 1,400 people in our Discord so far. Wendy, thank you so much for subscribing. Um, so please... Join us in Discord. If you click on the link in my bio, um, it'll be one of the links in there. That's like all the links. If you click on the link in my bio or go to tessicavision.com, it has all of my links. And one of them says join Discord. It also has um, the website in case you can't just click on it. Uh, Talise, thank you so much for subscribing. <laughs> it's, uh, oh, it's the go. Thank you, chicken and quaffles. The Discord is dsc.gg slash antimatrix if you want to just go to it. But please come and join us in Discord. There are You can chat with like-minded people. And I also have an announcements channel in which I announce when I'm going live on TikTok, when I drop a YouTube video, when I drop new merch, and all things like that. So it's a great place to be. I will add everybody in the announcements channel when I make announcements. How do there? Thank you so much. Um, what else? Also in there, oh, please also subscribe to my YouTube. It is Tessica Vision. Same name as here because I do post my TikTok live recording on YouTube the following day. So in case you miss any stories or you want to just rewatch the whole thing, it will be posted. This live will be posted tomorrow on my YouTube at some point. Um, so make sure you are subscribed to YouTube. I also post on YouTube. Now I just started doing every week. I do one compilation video of all of the videos from TikTok from the past week that you may have missed. So all of my stories and, and any other things are in like a compilation video that comes out once a week as well. I've been doing that on Wednesdays. Um, but yeah, so please subscribe to my YouTube, Tessica Vision. <sighs> I, wanna, I wish I could get everybody to also subscribe to my YouTube because I have only 8,000 subscribers on YouTube and I have almost 700,000 here. <laughs> but yes, I will set a new live gift goal in just one second. I'm trying to get through my whole spiel. But thank you so much. So yes, Discord, YouTube, subscribing, 
if you want to send stories, you can send them to glitches.tessicavision at gmail.com. That is also in the link in my bio. If you forget what I said, um, thank you, Turner. That is my YouTube. I know people are so excited to give me gifts. I love it. Um, also in there is my Amazon storefront. If you want to look at anything that I use or buy or wear or whatever, uh, my Amazon wish list and my PO box in case you'd like to send me anything. I do love to get gifts. It's really fun. Um, and my cameo. And this is my only account. Do not get scammed. If someone reaches out to you with a, an account name that's similar to mine and they say, hey, uh, I have a reading for you, Grand Rising, I have a message, give me your money, that is not me, I will never, ever, ever, never DM you and do that, but I do have really super great news, guys, <sighs> I'm out of breath again because I'm talking a lot, I was able to use that link where you like report things for copyright infringement and I reported all of the accounts that are not me and they all got taken down. They're all gone as of today. They are all gone. Woo! So I'm very excited about that. If you have any new ones, if you come across any new ones, in the Discord there is a channel that's called Report a Fake Account. Um, please send it in there and then I'll look into it and I'll get those taken down as well. I am so fucking excited. I had accounts with 5,000 subscribers 5,000 followers like trying to scam people out of money like what the fuck how's the book the book is going fantastic I am done with my little part my short little introduction I have all the stories edited um, I'm just adding some extra stories um, so if you if I read one of your stories today I may reach out to you and ask ask you to sign a release to potentially put it in the book so Thank you. So just keep your uh, keep your eyeballs open on your on your email there because I have so many stories that I want to include in the book and people are just not like answering my emails and like returning their release. So I can't put them in. Um, I should post what I did. Yes, I have actually told a few creators what I did, but you're right. I should make a post about it and I will. Let me write it down. Post about removal accounts I will definitely do that um but yeah so that's what's going on with the book my deadline for the book is October 16th when I have to hand it in um it will not be out for like a year because they're looking at a release date of like oct uh, like October because for like Halloween season of next year so that's what's going on with the book you got to stick with me for another year <laughs> Chrissy, I have not read, I'm not going to lie to you, I have not read your book yet. I have not even had time to finish any of the books I started reading or done anything else really because I've been super duper busy. Um, but I have it and it's on my list and I can't wait. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. But just keep your fingers crossed because, so I have the publisher and they have sent me the contract and we have been going back and forth with the contract for the past month. So cross your fingers that we get it signed and everyone's happy by then you'll have a second book ready to publish I will I was actually thinking about doing that I believe it I have been posting and posting and you don't even know all the stuff I do besides just posting can I pre pre-order your book <laughs> if it's ever on pre-order when it's on pre-order if that's a thing I will let you guys know I promise um but yes, yes, very exciting stuff. I will definitely do that. Like while they're doing that, I'm still going to keep collecting stories and I'll start putting a second book together because I want to release a second book. So even if this publisher doesn't want to release a second book, I'm sure another one will, or I could just self-publish a second book. <sighs> okay, guys, we have to start stories. I've been talking and talking and talking, and I love that you have stuck with me. Guys, has anyone seen... Rita Reese. Do you guys remember Rita Reese that used to come in here? Because she has two really good stories and she has told she told me she was going to send me the book release back and I can't find her now. <laughs> and I would love to uh, I would love to include them. It will also yes, the book will also be available as an audiobook as far as I know 
And I have already said that I would like to narrate it. Gift goal before I start. Yes. I've, if I waited 20 years for Barbie to get a live action movie, I can wait for you to drop your book. Thank you. Okay, let me, you're right. Gift goal. Let's do, is there any new really fun gift goals that I'm not seeing? You know what? Let's, let's do that cauldron because it was cute. Let's do some cauldrons. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Melanie, I have a story and I subscribed a while ago. What is the name of your story, my dear, so I can find it? I am using, my microphone is the Blue Yeti. I just got a galaxy. Did I miss it? Did I miss the galaxy? Thank you if I got a galaxy. Persevere, thank you. I just want to wait. Melanie, the hat man in my parents' house. Melanie, hat man in my parents' house. Thank you, Maddie. Maddie, Maddie. Maddie is rich, bitch. Did you, did you already finish my gift goal? No. No. Maddie, are you kidding me? I'm going to have to make this gift go harder, Mr. Maddie. What is happening? Ma oh, my God. <laughs> Maddie, your generosity is beautiful. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. Maddie wants to hear those. I can't read them if he keeps making me reset the gift goal. Here's the deal, guys. I have to pick one, two. I have to pick four stories. We have two from subscribers I'm going to read. Well, technically three because Alyssa has two. And then I have to pick. Maddie does have some deep pockets, and I appreciate that. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, <laughs> I need to pick four stories. So I'm going to ask you guys to start typing in the comments, and I will reset the gift goal. I'm going to make it a super hard gift goal, like super hard. Um while you're doing that and then I'll pick. So Serena, thank you so much for subscribing. If you ever had a story that you sent at any point and you would like me to read it right now, potentially, please start typing in the comments either the name of the story that you sent, like whatever you put in the subject line, or the first part of your email address. You can copy and paste that and you can type it as many times as you like in the chat. This is the only time you are allowed to spam the chat. And then after I set this gift goal, I will pick four people from the studio audience and we will read your stories specifically in addition to Alyssa and Melanie's subscriber stories. If you're new to this room, we do this at every 100,000 likes and at every gift goal until I say stop. <laughs> so make sure that you are tapping the screen to send those likes and if you are able, send gifts. Okay, so start spamming the chat while I am finding a really super hard gift goal so that we can't hit it for a minute so I can catch up. Um, what do we got? What do we got? Do, 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 do. Oh, this is new and it's the same as a galaxy and I want to see one. So I am literally going to put five of these and we will not hit that for a long time, hopefully. Okay. Okay, here we go. From Sasha Dot Dixon. Sasha Dot Dixon. Whoa, oh my god, wait. <gasps> Little Sarge, it's so pretty. Thank you, Gina. It's so pretty. Thank you. Guys, I can't see any of the words. Donna, my dream. My dream by Donna. Thank you so much. Those were beautiful. <laughs> I won't hit that. I'll wait. My Auntie Dana. My Auntie Dana. And which one? Which one? My son was waiting for my dad in heaven. Oh, my God. 
My son was waiting for my dad in heaven. Perfect. Okay, guys, we got it. We got it. Wait, who's Amber? Is Amber... Uh, wait, why is that one pinned? Did Jess see the comment about the updated version of the ghost story? No. What's that? What is that? Guys, it's 10.15 and I haven't even started reading yet. <laughs> Persevere. Oh. Yo, those are so pretty. The first girl's stories. It was mine. It was the second story. Oh, 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 oh. I'm just going to look you up by... Oh, an updated email. Okay. Got it, got it, got it, got it. I'm going to read your two first, Alyssa, then Melanie's, because you guys were the subscribers, and then we'll read one, two, three, the other four. And you guys are almost at 200K. I am so behind. <clears throat> okay. I'll be ready. I'm so ready for story time. Okay, so the first one is Alyssa's. We're doing I Can Reverse Time. I can reverse time and I convinced myself my mom had died. I'm just going to, for my title, I'm just going to write I can reverse time because it's a lot to, to write down. But okay, I can reverse time and I convinced myself my mom had died. We're starting this at 1 hour 11 minutes. <gasps> One hour, 11 minutes, guys. Here we go. <clears throat> Hello, Auntie Matrix. Hi. Big fan of your videos. After watching your entire series up to this point, oh, thank you, I thought I'd share my own experiences. Let me start off. <clears throat> oh, my God. My voice is going. That's not good. Let me start off by saying I've been tuned into Spirit Radio <laughs> for quite some time. Spirit Radio reminds me of Angel Radio from Supernatural. Tuned into Spirit Radio for quite some time. I can hear them and some show themselves to me, but others I can just see in my head. The first experience I'd like begins when I was asleep. I found myself in a large white room, very mental hospital-like. I was wearing white clothing, and the only thing in the room other than myself was two large buttons. One was a button with a large arrow signaling to the left and the other button signaling to the right. I knew I had to press them. I pressed the button to the left and all of a sudden a screen appeared and I was able to see my entire future life play out. Every large event, every death in my family, everything. I hit the button again and it stopped. I hit the button to the right and the floor began to shake. I could hear what sounded like a thunderstorm and a voice boomed saying, you can't go back, only forward. I was confused as to why there was a button then. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I pressed it once more and life started reversing. The ground shook more the further back I got into my own life. I woke up suddenly and life just felt wrong. I woke up in the same bed I had slept in, but something wasn't right. I closed my eyes and went back to sleep for what seemed like a few seconds, but when I woke up again, I knew I was in the right place. The second sleeping experience had me questioning if my mom had passed away. I went to bed that night per usual, but when I woke up in my dream, I had multiple missed calls and texts from my mother. This concerned my dream self as I was 100% certain that my mom had died. My mom is very much alive in real life. Wait, your mom's alive in real life? But you had a dream that she was definitely dead, but she was texting you. That's really weird. I'm rather close with my mom, so I opened the messages. I could feel all the feelings of grief, the heavy feeling in my chest, and the sadness. The messages were about finding her. If I found her, I could let her go, and she'd be at peace. So without hesitation, I searched for her until I found her spirit in what looked like a sand-covered cavern. She told me it was okay to wake up. It was okay to let go. I woke up in my own reality, and the first thing I did was call my mom, and sure enough, she was fine. Still freaks me out to this day. Very interesting. What? Hold on one second. <clears throat> oh, hold on. We are going to vote first. We are voting. Did you like the story? Happy face for yes and a sad face for no. That is really super crazy hold on one second 
I am just hold on I'm sorry I'm scrolling up Ooh. did I get a tan I did not get a tan I did not get a tan. Guys, I'm missing stuff right now. I'm missing stuff in chat. What am I missing? Ah! Hold on a second. We're happy facing. A lot of us are happy facing, and I am missing everything in chat. So we're just going to go. You can submit stories to glitches.testicavision at gmail.com. That is really super interesting. That like future, like the past future buttons is really, really weird. I'm assuming that this dream was like very vivid and lucid, but it's interesting that it was like, you could go back and you could look at everything. And I don't know why there was a button and the person was like, you can't go forwards. I mean, you can't go backwards, but then you press it again. And you went, you went backwards anyway. That was really weird. It was really weird. Really weird. Okay, hold on. Let's find your other one. You have another one that we're doing. So I'm going to look up this same email address. And first we're going to put this here. Then we're going to do this. And this is the updated one. Deceased prisoners need help. Deceased prisoners need help. You're already scared. <laughs> Maybe trying to go backwards messes the timeline. I'm sure that it does. But then they let her know anyway. So, I mean, they let her do it anyway. That was really weird. Okay. Deceased prisoners need help. This one starts at one hour, 16 minutes. Here we go. I sent you a previous email about some more matrix related things. However, this one is more about being a medium and being able to hear spirits. As stated previously, I am able to hear spirits and sometimes see them in my head. And if a spirit is comfortable enough with me, they may show themselves to me. This experience is rather recent. I live in Pennsylvania near the Appalachian Mountains, which is already scary enough. I was going to say I keep hearing things about the Appalachian Mountains. And one of the most known haunted locations is the Eastern State Penitentiary. I feel like I've heard of it. It started with a conversation with my husband talking about how he would never go to Eastern State at night and how I really wanted to go and do their twilight out twilight tours. I started getting, oh my God, Katie Joe, you should go there. I started getting ads and videos left and right on social media about Eastern State and then I had a very vivid dream about two well-known paranormal YouTubers regarding what I'm about to describe as I believe they also need to help. I kept getting visions of isolation, solitary confinement, and when doing research, I came across cell block five that gave me a disgusting feeling. It was very eerie, and after looking at photos, I was always able to pinpoint which ones were taken in or around block five as I was getting physically sick from looking at them. That's crazy crazy. At first, I started to hear the name David. It kept telling me that he was innocent and he didn't belong there. I couldn't find a prisoner list for a while, but while searching through famous prisoners, David Aiken came up. He was one of 12 prisoners who escaped Eastern State Penitentiary. He kept telling me that he wanted to go to the prisoner to have someone listen to his side of the story. I did not go searching for paranormal as I think it takes over people's lives sometimes. But then there was a vision of the cell block that housed prisoners of color and how horribly they were treated. I felt horrible pain in my stomach. A dream I had nights before regarding said YouTuber, YouTubers had numbers in it. And one of them was a two in my dream. I was on a train and train cart two was where the sick people went. Come to find out that cell block two was the hospital wing of Eastern State Today I've had visions as I get closer to going to Eastern State as I'm planning to finally go on Saturday. Oh, you haven't gone yet. Okay. 
Today was the intense feeling of pain in the back of my head and visions of a man hitting his head on either a porcelain sink or a toilet told me that it was an altercation with the guard. Another telling me it's not safe to walk around alone. I messaged a good friend who is a professional medium regarding a message I got for her today and I was told it was her great uncle coming to me that lived in Pennsylvania and had friends who had worked at Eastern State while I while it was up and running. I kept I keep being told to bring a notebook and that I'll get sick around block five. Wish me luck. You're still gonna go even though you're gonna get sick. Cell block five is the most haunted area in Eastern State. What friends, please be safe. Please be careful. Hold on one second. Katie Joe, maybe you shouldn't go there. Maybe you shouldn't go. We're voting. Did you like that uh, story? Happy face or yes and a sad face for no. Please vote. It should be down by the comments. Oh my goodness, friend. Please be safe. That is so crazy that you're getting specific names and and feelings and the train car and the cell blocks. Like that is all so crazy, but please be safe. Yes, going to need an update if you do. You've been there, Donna? Oh, man. Barbara, thank you so much. I've heard people get sick there. Yes. You just got the chills. Woo. Oh my goodness, Alyssa, you need to please be careful. Bum, 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 bum. Is she going live when she goes? I don't know. I don't know if she hasn't mentioned that she does that. Do you do that? Do you go live when you go? The Halloween attraction is always fun there. I've seen a few employees in empty halls. Ooh, hey, Nella. This is totally my vibe here, by the way. Thank you for having me, everyone. Thank you for being here, Maddie. We love you. We appreciate you being here. Hey, Tish. So Block 5 is super dangerous. Be careful. Oh, my God. You remember an episode of Supernatural about the person? Maybe I haven't seen that one yet. You went there with your kids. The Winchester estate? Like the Winchesters? Or is this a separate? This is the first time I'm going anywhere haunted. Oh, my God. Hey, Jessica. Whoo! Yes, please give us an update when you come back. I have a new rabbit hole to dive into. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, we're putting this here. I'm going to look up the next one while we are chatting. We're going to be reading new subscriber Melanie's The Hat Man in My Parents' House. Next, The Hat Man in My Parents' House. Oh, my God, and we hit 200K because you guys are fucking amazing. Okay. The Hat Man in my parents' house. We are starting at one hour and 22 minutes. Thank you, Turner. Here we go. Hi, Auntie. Hi. This is going to be a longer story. Yes. To preface this story, I have very high intuition and a sense of knowing and seeing images of the things that are not there in this realm. The names in this story are also not real names. When I was growing up, I always had an uneasy feeling going into my parents' basement. I always felt watched and or followed. There's a room in the house that we call the toy room. This is where they kept the computer and some toys when I was younger. When I played games on the computer, I always felt something watching me. When I turned 13, I moved downstairs into the basement as I wanted my own room away from my younger sister. My first night sleeping in that room, I got scared and went back upstairs to the room I shared with my sister. I ended up sleeping there a few months later, which in turn became my bedroom. My bedroom is next door to the toy room. Anytime I got up to go to the bathroom or get a drink out of the downstairs fridge, I felt uneasy and always ran back to my room. Even when I showered downstairs, I was scared, and when I closed my eyes, I envisioned it to be a tall, black shadow with a top hat. The hat man! I woke up many nights scared that it was watching me or hovering over me. Fast forward to 2020, I moved out to who is now my ex fiance's trailer. My sister moved into my room downstairs with her boyfriend, John. In some time in 2021, John and I were discussing ghosts. He can see ghosts. He was telling me how there is a man with a top hat and a trench coat in my parents' 
house. I said, does he have boots? The reason why I asked was because when I was laying in bed one night, I heard someone walking down the hallway to my room with boots on. Nobody was awake and the cat at the time was on my windowsill. There were no other animals in the house. I was super freaked out and looked outside the room and saw nobody. I told this to John and he said, yes, he does have boots. He also said that my grandma and grandpa were in the house too, guarding us from whatever evil entity it was. I thought that was ironic because back in 2017, I had a friend spend the night. I remember this night particularly because when they got up to go to the bathroom, as a joke, I hid under my bed because I think it's funny to scare people. I hate that. Side note, because I get startled so easily. I hate being scared. (laughs) After they came out of the bathroom, they went walking downstairs and called my name a few times. After a few minutes, I came out from under my bed, and when I did, they looked shocked. They swore that they saw me run past the end of the hallway leading to the family room. I said I never left, and I was under the bed. They swore up and down that I was in the family room because he saw a lady who looked like me run past the doorway, which ended up freaking me out. Now I look back on that. It was my grandma in her younger body. After this conversation with John, I went back to my parents' house and kept provoking it. Why? provoking it i broke up with my ex-fiance in september of 2021 i moved to my sister's house for about two weeks before moving back home in those two weeks i provoked it some more when i went to bed one night i felt scared and i put my great grandma's rosary around my neck and then fell asleep while i was sleeping i had a nightmare that the top hat uh top hat man came face to face with me he had red eyes yep 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 and i couldn't make out a face yes 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 he was choking me he is like the most world's famous sleep paralysis demon I woke up that morning to find that the rosary was broken. I was scared. I went back to my parents' house a few days later. One of my friends with her baby showed up to hang out. After a while of hanging out, she started, I'm sorry, we started discussing the stories about the hat man and how my grandparents are in the house as well. My friend told me that she felt someone touch her belly. I said it as I just knew that it was my grandma protecting you and the baby from the hat man. I went to talk to John about it and we started discussing the possibility that the hat man was attached to something in the house. I used my intuition to feel around to see if I could sense anything. I went into the toy room and at first felt the walls. It wasn't in the walls, but I saw this bin and I knew it was in there. I didn't know what I was looking for, but when I opened the bin, I saw many picture frames. I started digging through them and found a painting from around the late 1800s. I showed it to John and he said that must be it. In this picture frame held a painting that has many different people in it. When I was looking at it, I didn't get a sense that any of them was the hat man. John and I looked at the photo carefully and saw that he was in the shadows of the photo and were amazed. We went to show my sister and my friend what we had found. We told them that the hat man is linked to this photo. John took the photo to keep it safe until I could dispose of it. A few weeks later, I moved back into my parents' house in the downstairs living room. My current boyfriend has stayed over. He knew about the hat man. The next morning, I'm sorry, my current boyfriend had stayed over. He knew about the hat man. The next morning, he told me that he heard someone walk down the hallway and just stop by our bed. He's not scared of that stuff since he watches a lot of scary movies. He said he didn't do anything and he went back to bed. A few days later, I asked John about the photo. When they went off to work and my parents were outside having a bonfire, I brought out the photo and burned it and told the hat man that he must now leave. After that, I saged the entire house to cleanse the residue from him and to make sure that he was gone. After that day, I have not felt the hat man nor my grandparents in the house. I said that they could stay, but I'm pretty sure they wanted to pass on since they no longer needed to protect us from the hat man. But now leaves the question of why I have always felt like I'm being watched when outside of my parents' house in the dark. The end of that story Hold on a second. We are going to vote happy face for yes, sad face for no. Did you like that story? Your TV turned off randomly. Ah! Um, I shouldn't be freezing for you. My connection is beautiful. Uh, If I'm freezing for you, try maybe updating your app or going out and coming back in. Maris, thank you so much for subscribing. That was crazy. I want to say... So the hat man is like, you know, world's famous. Um, yours is garbage. World famous sleep paralysis demon has tall man, shadow figure, hat on, red eyes, no facial features, right? So that is definitely like a hat man description. I have never heard, though, 
of the hat man i feel in my brain the hat man is more of a not a demon but like that kind of entity right i have never heard of a hat man being connected to an item so that's very interesting to me i mean it must have been right because if you found the item you figured it out and then you burned it Oh, someone said he just left the house and he stays outside. Interesting. I don't know. What do you guys think? Hey, Megan, how are you? I went out and came back in. It's been perfect since. Nice, 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 nice. That's very interesting. Maybe it's a man wearing a hat. So maybe it's not the hat man. It's a man wearing the hat. It's just like a man wearing a hat. It's a different thing than a hat man that that they were seeing. I do also, you think the energy is still there. I do also think it's very interesting that the grandparents aren't there anymore. Maybe they're just protecting. You think it's multiple entities. Oh. Hey, Victoria. Interesting. I'm only going to include two stories in my email this time because it would take hours to read them. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. She should have burned it somewhere else. The book, The Reluctant Psychic by Suzanne Saxman has a story about the hat man. Interesting. Could be an entity pretending to be a demon. Ooh. You're using the smudge spray? (laughs) It's like he's attached to the property because he was in the shadows of the picture. Yes, I forgot about that. Missed you too. That's okay. Gray hair is pretty. (laughs) Thank you so much for sharing your story. I believe our family members come to protect us when needed and leave when not needed. And he got kicked out of the house. Yes, yes, yes. Interesting. All right. Okay. My friends, my friends, my friends, my friends. Where are we? Okay, good. We still need one where we haven't hit the gift goal yet, which is great. (laughs) Whose stories take hours to read? I don't know. Not yours or Justin's. Yours are definitely longer than Justin's. Justin's are long, but yours are definitely longer than Justin's. (laughs) But at least they are beautifully fucking written. Okay, we're moving on. I have four more here that I'm going to read. And then we'll have to pick for the 200K and possibly the gift goal if we hit that. So the next one is Sasha Dixon. So Sasha Dixon, let's find you. Is this it right here, time glitch? There's time glitch and time glitch update. Is that you? persevere oh thank you so much ah, beautiful a lot of people say i have miss rachel's voices miss miss rachel's voice thank you so much the update wait should i read both of them or just the update i will i'll set another gift goal in just a second Read just the update. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this one. And we're going to just read the update. So this is... Time glitch. Okay, let me just reset this gift goal. Oh. Let's see what other new ones we have (gasps) a flying witch oh that one's like three thousand i'm not gonna put that one down i can't okay let's do the boiling cauldrons boiling cauldrons My new deep pocket person left. (laughs) Okay. We're doing time glitch. Ready? And we're starting it at 1 hour, 33 minutes. Here we go. 
Hi, Auntie. Hi. I watch you on TikTok and I decided to share something with you. I'm from the Caribbean and this is really weird. So back in 2021, I was working from home. It was just a regular afternoon and I had finished working, so I decided to get some rest. After waking up around 8 p.m., mind you, I'm living alone, I posted some status on my WhatsApp and it seems my time had 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 been messed up. I wasn't able to take a screenshot or anything on my phone, but the date was December 24th, 1967. I couldn't understand because it kept posting and it was the same date. So I started asking people to tell me if they're seeing the stuff I'm posting, but no one was answering me. I started panicking because how can it be that I'm in 1967, but still able to speak with everyone in my contacts? I instantly shut my phone off and switched it back on and boom, same date again. I decide to go have Starbucks with my friend, and while I'm at the bus stop, this guy came up to me and called me by a different name. I replied with, sorry, wrong person, and he said, no, how could I forget? We had lunch the other day. What? I freaked out, and my friend thought it was really weird, because the crazy thing is when I got back home, I had like a vision of this guy. I ran to bed trying to erase my brain. When I woke up the next morning, everything was back to normal the end that was weird that was really weird like what first i was like okay your phone just glitched out like that happens right your phone glitches out like my computer has glitched out where it says like fucking the date is like 1921 or some weird shit right so i was like okay your phone just glitched out but then the fact that you kept restarting it it wouldn't and you're posting, no one's reading it. And then you go and this guy's calling you by a different name and swears that you had lunch. Like, what is that? That's really weird, man. That must have made you feel so weird. Okay, hold on. We are voting. Did you like that story? Happy face for yes, sad face for no, parallel past life. It could have been either. Could have been either. Maybe she was visiting a past life. I feel like maybe I'm going to lean towards she like hopped into a a very, very close timeline. That's a very similar timeline. That's so weird. But if she happens into a very similar timeline, okay, so this is a weird thing, right? If you're back in 1967 for realsies, like if you like hopped back for realsies, you don't have a cell phone because that doesn't, that shit doesn't exist yet, right? And all, and S- Starbucks, did they even have Starbucks in 1967? I have no fucking idea. Alexa, when was the first Starbucks opened? Starbucks was founded on March 30th, 1971 by Jerry Bowen Okay, wasn't even open. Bacher. They weren't... Okay, Super. Alexa. It is- Thank you very much. You're so welcome. <laughs> Your kindness really gives me a charge. Yes. Hope you had a good Thursday. Thank you. I did. I hope you did too. Um... Right? So you can't be that you hopped back in time. I don't know. Maybe you hopped into another timeline, like a very similar timeline, and your phone freaked out because of it. You took your phone with you? I don't know, guys. I don't know. Guys, just a reminder, be very nice to your AI devices, you know, just in case. Doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt to be nice. Did the world look different, like the cars and the stores? That's actually a great question. <laughs> Amanda, maybe Starbucks was around at that time in that timeline. Maybe. We need a TV show together. He was looking at me weird and like, how come I don't know him? Different name had a vision of the same guy that she had lunch with. <laughs> Persevere. <laughs> maybe some time traveler said hmm starbucks makes bank let me go back and open it in the 60s she was boarding a bus to go there she may not have known it didn't in that world (gasps) yes friends all right all right Mm. (laughs) crunchy bones my mom is watching this. Hey, Mom, Reese. Video. Pop-up video. Guys, remember pop-up video? 
Are you looking at a commons? I don't know what that is. Yes, so if I'm about to read some more stories. Okay. Next story is going to be from Donna, my dream. Let's check it out. Donna, my dream. My. Thank you, Mama T. Thank you so much. Donna, can you please tell me the first part of your um, of your email address so I can find this? Because I have quite a lot of things with the word dream in it when I search. Woo! <gasps> Bitch. I said what I said. Something, something, something. I don't know the rest of the words. I'm waiting for Donna. I need to know what it is, Donna. What is your email address so I can find you, Donna? Donna. You were? I'd rather be famous instead. I'd rather be famous instead. Did I do good? <laughs> Donna, where are you? Ooh, there you are, Donna. Okay. Donna, J. One, two, oh, shit. Oh, thank you so much, whoever pinned that. One, two, one, four, seven, two. My mods are the best. Thank you, I found it, Donna. It is two, three sentences long? What's up, Uncle Matrix? Natasha's playing. Oh. Natasha's playing with her paper a little bit. She is. And she's feeling is she walking easier? A little. She's a little, having a little trouble with it, but she's like chasing the paper, running around. Oh. Everyone says hi. Hi guys. Also, before they said they said to tell you good luck on your surgery I tomorrow. Got, I got text from her. Text from who? Uh, you said day. Yeah. I thought you said Bay. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, you got a text from Bay. Yeah. Um. Luna Tunes, do you want to leave? Because you're going to be alone in here. I'm glad she's playing. Yeah, she's playing. That makes me happy. Yep. How's her eyeballs look? They're close and squinty. I think it's all the, the, the stuff in there. Good luck, Uncle. Uncle, what up, King? Uncle Matrix, huh? you're a king. Unky <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Matrix. Good luck, good luck. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Okay. All right. Okay. I love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. He wanted to let me know that Natasha is playing. If you guys were in here before, um, I was saying how my little baby. But I don't want to yell. Hold on. No shit, I'm I'm still muted. God damn it, I did yell for you. I did yell for you. Yeah. She was trying to get out. Come on, Boots. <laughs> it's fucking bitch. Hold on. I'm not still muted. I'm not still muted, right? <laughs> she get out? No. Okay. I'm turning on the AC because I'm a hot. Hot, hot, hot. <laughs> my cat yes uh i did mean to un unmute yes <laughs> i was, i just didn't want to yell into the microphone because i was screaming for him to come back in and open the door the corgi blanket is from one of my followers one of my fans i think it was reesey i think reesey sent it to me i hide under it sometimes are the stones viking i don't know it just says the book of runes i don't think they are I think they're just like the runes. But Uncle Matrix likes Viking stuff and he's, he thinks that some of them look like Viking runes. I don't know if they are or not because I don't know anything about them. Um, my cat is okay. She, I think, got a scratch in her eye or something because she had like her, 
her one of her eyes was like super red, swollen, gook all over it. The other one had a little gook. We took her to the vet, and now she's wearing a little cone, and she has some like gel stuff we have to put in her eyeballs. She's okay though. She's an indoor cat, by the way. But I have five cats, so she's probably just playing with another cat, or she scratched herself. That one is named Natasha, but I have five. That's you, Reese. You got me this, right, Reese? My memory's terrible. Most runes are Scandinavian. Cool, cool, cool. Holy shit. Yes, I'm excited too. Where is it from? I don't know. Where is it from, Reese? How do I gift a sub? <laughs> Odin's your favorite. Odin, all the cats are in another room. I don't have any cats in here right now. Um, can somebody tell Reese how to gift a sub? Because I don't remember. Can someone tell, tell Reese? Do you read physical books? I do actually really enjoy to read physical books. I like to sit down with something, and I have read a few. I have a couple to go. I actually, one of my, one of my fans here, followers here, um, Christy sent me a book that I really want to read, and it's about like being a storyteller. Uh, I'm not a storyteller, like a story keeper, like a keeper of stories. It looks really, really cool. No, I wasn't looking for Reese. I was looking for Rita Reese. My last book was The Power of Now. I like nonfiction books. I don't like to read fiction. You missed four stories. We are about to read My Dream by Donna, which is just a couple of sentences. So I'm just going to read it real quick and then we can vote on that. No, not the gift goal, silly goose. <laughs> Did you send this? Are you the person that sent me this blanket? The corgi blanket. I feel like it might have been you. I'm so, my memory is so fucking bad. It's so bad. Can someone screenshot how to gift subs and post it in Discord? Can somebody do that for Persevere, please? Screenshot how to gift a sub and post it in the Discord. Katie. You're scared already? <laughs> Conversations with God. Interesting. You didn't? Who did? Who sent me that then? I'm so bad. My memory is so bad. Thank you for the gifts. Thank you, Jenna. A few sentences better be good. Excuse me. Don't be mean, okay? All right, this is my dream. Thank you, Mama T. One hour, 46 minutes. Years ago, I had a dream that I was at a funeral. I knew everyone there. I walked up to say my goodbyes and it was me. I told my dad about it and that I didn't see him. He said, oh, punk, and maybe I was in the restroom. Well, he passed on 10-10-2012, so I guess that's why I didn't see him. Interesting. That was the end of the little one. We are going to vote. Did we like that little mini story? Happy face for yes and a sad face for no. Aw. Arlenis, thank you. I'm so glad I remind you of your teacher. I barely figured out how to sub myself. I'm definitely not one to show someone how to gift. <laughs> Did somebody do it? I see something in general chat. No. No, no, no. I don't. I don't remember. I'm so... I don't remember. My memory is so, so bad. Was it you? Is that why you're saying that, Vanessa? No, Katie didn't get me this blanket. She did get me a bunch of corgi stuff, including corgi socks, like a bunch of corgi socks. <laughs> Thank you. I have a beautiful aura. Thank you so much. Good. I'm so glad, Carrie. Guys, oh, holy shit. I got to scroll down. I live on Long Island, Long Island in New York. All right. All right. The next one. We are doing is my auntie Dana, Dana. I thought it said my auntie Dang. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. My Auntie Dana. Let's find that one. Ba -ba -ba -ba. 
Um, if somebody knows how, can you please take a screenshot of how to gift a sub and put it in the Discord for Persevere? <clears throat> that would be really super great. I feel like somebody did that a while ago. Hold on a sec. Um, okay. We're doing this, this, this. Let me just search this. Hold on. GIF. Mm. No. I don't know. When you click on the star to subscribe, it should say gift subscription underneath. Maybe not everyone has it. Oh. All I hear is Schmidt, Long Island. <laughs> Schmidt. You dirty old bitch. Long Island. Billy Joel. Billy Joel again. L I R R. <laughs> All right. We're doing. I got to find this one. Hold on a second. Lindsay, uh, I pick. I have a list of stories that we have picked random from the audience. I don't know if they're going to be long or not. I don't know what they're going to be about. We're just going with it, guys. We're just going with it. We get what we get. My Auntie Dana. Okay. My Auntie Dana is one hour and 50 minutes. This is a short one as well. Sorry to whoever just asked for a long story. Hi, Auntie Matrix. Hi. This isn't a scary story, but I swear my aunt's spirit woke me up. So for context, me and my aunt were super close when she passed, and I stayed in the room with her until she took her last breath. So one day, my baby brother had to go to the hospital because he had a swollen lymph node in his neck, and I fell asleep waiting on my mom to call. Out of nowhere, I hear vividly my aunt call my nickname Punkin, but it sounded panicked, and I jumped out of my sleep, and my mom had just called less than five minutes before, and I woke up. I wholeheartedly believe it was my aunt waking me up because my mom needed me to come get them from the ER. The end. We are going to vote. Do we like that little story? Happy face for yes and a sad face for no. That is very cool that your aunt called out for you to help you out. Persevere, they're, they're posting in the, uh, in the Discord for you. Thank you guys so much. Like three of you, four of you just did it. Thank you, thank you. Ba ba bum, ba da ba bum, boo 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 boo. My son was waiting for my dad in heaven. And then after that, we're gonna pick two more. Two more. Okay. Boom, boom. Thank you, Jennifer. Jennifer. Where can you find my emotes? I don't know. I think there's something that you click on. <laughs> Where do you, subscribers, how do you get to my emotes? Anti-Matrix need a book of all the side quests. Your conversations take, I know, I'm sorry. I like that you're calling them side quests. Yes. Hortensia, people finding teeth randomly. I actually just did a video on that today. It's up on my page because, oh, you can get the, you can get the emotes, the star. When you go to the text box, there's a star and you can get my emotes there. Um, when you click to comment, I just made a video about that today because I was getting tagged non motherfucking stop in this video about the lady talking about the teeth. The comments about the teeth, people finding fucking random teeth. So I tried looking it up, so I made a video about it. Made a video about it today. Uh, 
so it is up guys is my friggin glitch in the matrix story up yet that i posted like three hours ago is it up yet can someone tell me before we read this one it is up whoa finally up thank god they finally put it up okay we are reading i think the new tooth fairy quit due to inflation <laughs> Um, okay, we are reading, my son was waiting for my dad in heaven. One hour, 54 minutes. Oh my God. Hi, Jess. Hi. I'm a huge fan of your videos. And it's always such a great confirmation for me that there's so much more out there and that my experiences are real. Yes, friend. Yes. Anyways, my story, trigger warning. This does involve SIDS and infant death. So if that's a trigger for you hop out for a minute. In 2015, I lost my son to SIDS. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. Well, I was living with my grandparents and an important detail is that they mainly raised me and I call my grandpa dad. He meant the world to me. He was with me the morning that I woke up and lost my son and has always been my biggest supporter before and after. So in 2020, when COVID hit and I lost him, I lost my world. I don't believe this was a glitch, but more confirmation of my gifts. Two weeks before my dad passed, I was driving and had a vivid image of my dad on ventilators and life support. It messed with me so much that I had to pull over because I was in a panic. Fast forward the next day, my dad calls me as he is walking into the ER, barely able to breathe, telling me that he loves me. This is when I knew I saw what was going to happen. Two weeks later, I get a call from my mom that he is on vents and it's time to say goodbye. This destroyed me. I couldn't go back home to Texas because I had three kids under 10 and I am their main caretaker. So they had to FaceTime me to say goodbye. So it's time for the call. And I answered and he was there just like I saw two weeks before on vents. I say my goodbyes. He passed the next day. I'm so, so sorry. This is terrible. Two things happened that night that confirmed he wanted to say goodbye to me. Two. My son asked me who the man was standing by the bed that night who I couldn't see. He was three. And I was told by my mom that my aunt had a dream with all her brothers and sisters who passed in the living room of my great grandmother's house laughing together. Oh, I'm crying as I'm uh, typing this. Bear with me. And my day is there holding. Oh, my dad. My dad is there holding a baby boy my son joshua they were together those two things keep me at peace when it hurts to miss him thank you for all the stories you read confirming all of us who can see and feel more oh, stop. thank you so much for sharing i'm so sorry for your losses but that is so beautiful that your son was there that is a very beautiful story and i really really appreciate you sharing that thank you so much and i'm so sorry for your loss we love you so much we're gonna vote really quick um did you like that story happy face for us and a sad face for no don't you dare put a sad face i'll kill you sending big hugs thank you for sharing yes thank you so much for sharing that oh that was so beautiful that was sad but also beautiful I'm just making notes over here. Oh, who sad faced? Coming at ya. <laughs> Coming at you with these fists of fury. I just want to give you guys a heads up. I normally get off around, uh, I like to get off by midnight. And today, is, today right now is 11.04 p.m. So we have a little more than a little less than an hour. Why can't I? Like, literally, my brain is going backwards. Opposite. My brain is going opposite with every word I'm trying to say right now. It is not working very well. Oh, my God. When I was early prego with my first, I had a dream. My dad handed me my perfect daughter. Oh. 
Whoever keeps seeing long story, it is not up to me if it's a long story, boo-boo, okay? We're picking from the studio audience. We're reading their stories. I don't know what we're getting. You get what you get. If you don't like it, you could go. No one's holding you here. No one's got you in handcuffs. Can't you read? Nope, I can't. I can't read. I'm actually not reading any of these stories. I'm just making them up off the top of my head. How many did you miss? That was number seven. We are about to pick eight and nine. Um, <laughs> you get what you get and you don't get upset. <laughs> you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Um, okay. So we're going to pick two more stories. Everyone is saying it. We're going to pick two more stories. Just as a reminder to everyone in the room, if you're new here, uh, we pick a new story. We read another story at every 100,000 likes and at every gift goal. So we are halfway to the next like goal, and we are more than halfway to the next gift goal. So please tap the screen to send likes. It's free, it's fun, and it's easy and helpful for me and helpful for you. And if you are able, and only if you are able, please send gifts. What got me into these? You're new here. Hello and welcome. Um, I had a TikTok for a while. It was a spiritual stuff TikTok. One day, about a year ago, actually, one year ago-ish, I have actually finished the diaper cake I'm working on. You have made this day, this go by fast. Woo! Nice job. One day, about a year ago, I was reading Glitch in the Matrix stories just like online. I was like, these are actually pretty cool. I want to share these with my followers. I think they would like them. Posted a video about them. Everyone was like, oh my God, we like these, do more. Posted another video about them. And then people started saying, can I send you mine? And I was like, yeah, okay. And then people started sending so many, I made an entire new email address for them. And fast forward a year later, I have a lot of followers. We're doing these lives. I have a book that I'm putting out. And we have over 6,000 unread emails, unread emails in my inbox with people's stories. And we have created this beautiful community. And I'm so excited about it. I'm so thankful for all of you guys that share your stories with me and allow me to share them with the world and everyone that's a part of this community. I love you guys so much. I just love all of you. Oh, you guys are amazing. People need to be kind. If not, you can leave. This is a positive space. This is very correct. And now she's our auntie. That's me. Yes, this is a positive space. You can go. So happy for this community. Yes. You've watched all my 200 plus Glitch of the Matrixes. You've been sub for 219 days, my friend. Woo! You guys are amazing. I'm making a Hatman inspired painting right now, so don't read anything scary. I can't help what's going to come up. TT Matrix. <laughs> I'm thankful to be part of it. I'm thankful you guys are all part of it. I love you so much. Um, okay, we need to pick two more stories right now. So if you have a story that you have sent at any point and you would like me to potentially read right now, please start typing in the comments the name of the story, whatever you put in the subject line so that I can find it in my inbox. Um, you can copy and paste that and you can spam the chat. This is the only time you are allowed to spam the chat. And then I'm gonna turn around in a second and we will pick two more stories to read and if we don't have to i'll just pick at random some two stories from my inbox because i do have a lot i do have a lot in here if you're new to the room we do this at every 100,000 likes and at every gift goal so please make sure you are tapping the screen to send those likes and you are sending gifts if you are able and if you like to subscribe it's only 2.99 okay amber my first paranormal experience my first paranormal experience and was that you Larry Larry was that you Larry <laughs> congratulations come on down <laughs> does anyone know why I just screamed like that just because I want to 
Impractical Jokers, yes! You were thinking the same when you said Larry? Yes! <laughs> Did something just happen to your screen? It just got really bright. It's just me. Guys, I literally could watch, and I do. I'm not a medium, no. Uh, Impractical Jokers reruns over and over and over, and I just laugh hysterically every fucking time. Every fucking time. <gasps> Swedish fish! I ordered some Swedish fish. I have some Swedish fish. I'm going to get the Swedish fish. You just made me want them. I'm going to get the Swedish fish. Hold on. Yeah, it's always on True TV. There's like always True TV on True TV. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get them. I'll be right back. Talk amongst yourselves. Talk amongst yourselves about your favorite impractical joker. Okay, bye. Hold on. For anyone wanting to see Odin, he came in the room. Say hello, Odin. Say hello. This is Mr. Odin. He's a Maine Coon. He's one of five cats. He's my biggest one. He's giant. You're a giant cat. You're so giant. Wanna get down? Okay. <laughs> now that I have cat hair all over my face. <laughs> He's so fluffy. <laughs> mm. You can't have the kitty. The people they play the jokes on always seem like they know it's fake or they're being recorded. So not always, no. But I do have to say that... <laughs> You're embarrassing me. <laughs> I do have to say that I feel like I would react so much stronger the weird joke shit I feel like I'd be the person cursing them out and stuff ASMR ASMR anybody 300k oh my god you guys are amazing and we just need five more cauldrons he is gorge right Swedish fish I don't think my house is haunted I have a very good energy in here. That's because you're from New York. We don't play in New York. That's true, but they, they film in New York. You think more people wouldn't play? <laughs> oh, man, Hannah. I know Swedish fish are vegan, but they got a, like a whole bunch of red 40, I think. Jessica, thank you so much for subscribing. Mama, thank you so much for the cauldron. Mmm. I don't think I've tried the other flavors of colors of Swedish fish. Just got home from having your baby. Congratulations, Tracy. Oh, enjoy it. Oh, my God. Just do me a favor, and this is going to sound really creepy, but I need you to do it. Take a big whiff of your baby's head for me, please. And kiss it. <laughs> and if there's any rolls, make sure you give them a little squeeze. <laughs> Congratulations. They all taste the same. Mm. Seriously, enjoy it. Mine's one and he's a goblin. <laughs> baby smell. Oh, God, that new baby smell. <laughs> mm. 
Hmm. Mine's four. He's fighting me every chance he gets. Okay. That's how you feel about the top of your dog's head? Same with my cats. I love the cat smell. Hot take. Baby magic smells the best notch on. I never tried baby magic. You trade me a handful? I don't know if I like Rolos. Wait till the teenagers. Mine is 10. So we're getting there. <gasps> the toe beans, Amanda. The toe beans. Mm. Hey, can Ahmad please uh, ban Tarot with Jodes because they're spamming people? Katie Rose, thank you so much for subscribing. <laughs> Jess. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, me and my daughter had a... She slept with me last night. We called having a special night. It only happens once in a while. My fiancé will sleep on the couch because he's such a good fucking dad. And she slept in the bed with me last night. It happens maybe like once a month. I know we have to read. I'm just enjoying some Swedish fish for a second. Yes, Soph. Mmm, I'm excited. That's a long one, Danielle. All right. We're doing my first paranormal experience. Yo, my handwriting is absolute garbage. <laughs> Hold on. My first paranormal experience. Mm. Ooh, Amber. It's Amber, right? I want to make sure. Yes, I am doing some more stories after these two, yes. They do sell them on Amazon, Swedish Fish. You going to send me some? <laughs> I'm live! That's you, right? My first paranormal experience? Yes. Yes, Jess. Jess, so I'm not sure when I'm going live next. And the reason is because Uncle Matrix is getting surgery tomorrow. And it depends on how he's feeling when I'll be able to be live. And there may be some times maybe when I'm going to be live, but I might have to be like, hold on a second and go help him with something. Because he literally won't be able to walk even to go to the bathroom without assistance in the beginning. But I can't wait to hear your flesh pedestrian story. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, witch. Aw. Thank you, V. What kind of surgery? He's having Achilles repair surgery. He tore his Achilles. Hi, Lily. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. One more Swedish fish, and then we're reading. Guys, this one is long. And then so is the Larry story. So we got two long ones coming up. It is very painful, yes. You know the candy hits the spot when the dances come out. <laughs> Thank you. I've done that. It's painful. Mm-hmm. Mm. So it's not completely torn. And how he did it was, he actually, 
did it on his left foot a few years ago and had surgery on that foot. And now it's on the right foot and we're having surgery. His uh, body formed bone spurs. This happened the same both feet. Bone spur on the back of his foot in like a hook shape. So his Achilles tendon was just slowly getting on this hook bone spur and it tore. So not only, so it makes it extra painful, right? So not only are they repairing the Achilles tendon, they're also having to shave the bone spur. So how is he walking? Very slowly <laughs> and in a lot of pain. He's in pain every single day. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a Saw movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's only one of his problems. That's just his biggest problem right now. Mm-hmm, you, yep. Yeah. I hope he heals quickly too, but a full recovery on an Achilles thing is like nine to 12 months. <laughs> like a full recovery. Your daughter's about to have back surgery. Oh, Amber, good luck to your daughter. Good luck. I said one more and I'm eating one more. Um. Mm, 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 mm. All right. Thank you guys for all your kind words. Here we go, guys. We're reading my first paranormal we're reading my first paranormal experience so if, please stop asking me to read your story i love your enthusiasm but it's not time to ask for that yet we're going to be picking more stories after i read these two um so at that point you'll be able to be like hey and try to get your story in there cool okay all right my first paranormal experience two hours and 16 minutes here we go. Hey, Auntie Matrix. Hi. I love hearing all the glitch and paranormal stories, and I thought I would share one of my own. It's more paranormal than a glitch, but here it is. I'm having a contact issue. Growing up, it always was just me and my mom. We lived in a smaller town, and her job was about 30 minutes away. When I started kindergarten, she would drop me off at the babysitter's, which was about halfway in an even smaller town between where we lived and where she worked. The babysitter lived way out in the country on a horse farm. Interesting. I had just started kindergarten and the bus would pick me up and the other kids she babysat up for school. Since she lived so far out, the bus had to take the highway for a short distance to get into town where the school was. I always sat by the window and would watch the cars on the other side. Not sure why, but I've always enjoyed looking at the scenery. Something about how things up close moved fast and things further away moved slow it was always interesting one particular day it was normal as any other my mom dropped me off at the sitters i got ready for school and boarded the bus i sat in my assigned seat and stared out the window as usual as the bus was traveling down the highway something in the middle part of the highway caught my attention it was the grassy median part i think that's what it's called that split traffic you know the two lanes going one way and the two lanes going the other yes i know exactly what you mean at that time, it was one of those slow, fast moments I enjoy, but reversed. It was a woman. I remember it so clearly. I remember thinking to myself how odd it was that a woman was trying to cross the highway and why she was even there, but I could see her head to toe. I remember how she was dressed, what her hair looked like, how long it was, how tall she was, but most importantly, she had a suitcase on the ground just to her left. I even remember making full-on eye contact and our heads turning towards each other as we passed by. That wasn't the weirdest thing, though. You would think seeing a random person standing in the middle of the highway waiting to cross would be weird, but it was her color. And what I mean by color is that she wasn't white or black or anything. She was almost like a spectrum of colors. Like when you hold a water hose up and you create a rainbow kind of spectrum, but you can still see through it. What? I remember the color so vividly, and she was not see-through. Pure solid mass. It was always a quiet, I'm sorry, I was always a quiet, shy kid, so I didn't say anything to anyone, and I don't recall hearing anyone else on the bus saying that they saw her too. When I got home from school, I told my mom, and my mom said I must have just dozed off. 
Flash forward a couple of years. My grandfather passed away and my mom decided it was time for us to pack up and move. We moved to the city where she worked so that we would not have to commute anymore. She was a single mom and this allowed her more time to be with me. I started a new school and she took a couple of days off to unpack. When I came home, I noticed that she had hung up a bunch of old family photos. There was one photo in particular that caught my eye and I asked my mom about it because I had never seen it before. It was a photo that had been packed away for years. It was a black and white photo and it was of a woman at some kind of carnival or fair. I immediately got chills because it was the same woman I saw a couple of years back on the highway. Same outfit, same hair everything. My mom had a terrible memory, so I had to tell her about what I experienced that day and explain to her what I saw, that I saw this exact woman. She was still convinced that I must have been tired that day and dozed off because there was no way I had ever seen this woman. It turned out to be my grandmother who died a year before I was even born. And the reason I never saw this photo before was because my grandfather took her passing pretty hard and it was hard for him to see it. I think about this experience from time to time and I know what I saw and small little details about the experience just make some sense to me. For instance, the rainbow color I saw her as could be from the absent color from the only photo we have of her since it was in black and white. That's an interesting take. And not to mention the suitcase she has with her when I saw her. In the photos, she was at a carnival. I found out later on that she would from time to time travel with my grandfather because he was a carny at the carnivals at that time before he became a truck driver. She always had a suitcase full of her stuff. It's almost as if she was still traveling or waiting on my grandfather so that she could travel more. Oh! the end okay hold on we are going to vote on that story did we like it happy face for yes and a sad face for no that is very cool i love and that is very interesting to me that you saw her as like a spectrum of colors that's very interesting to me and I love that it was your grandma that you had never, ever seen because she passed away before you were born. Oh, my God. Your grandpa was a carny. Like, how awesome is that? I actually know people also that ran away and joined the circus for realsies. <laughs> I've never heard of that, right? That was very cool and interesting. Thank you so much for sharing that. Odie's, what are you doing? Your brother was a carny? What did your grandpa do in the, in the carnivals? I wondered, do you know? What did he do? It was what caught my eye. I named, I was named after her. Oh, your parents own a carnival. Very cool. I think that's so crazy that you just saw, saw her once, just once, like in the middle of the road. That was such a great description. I actually felt like I could see everything. Yes. A carny is just someone who like works at a carnival. Blue Sky Amusements. Long Island. I'm on Long Island. Our home feels like a carnival. <laughs> he ran the Ferris wheel. He knew the alligator man and the bearded lady. What? That's so cool. What is an alligator man? I don't like clowns either, babe. I've been live for a couple of hours. I come from Carney too. All my uncles and cousins. That is so cool. You know what's crazy to me? This is shit I think about. People are... You're based out of Suffolk. I'm in Suffolk County. People are so different. Like, people live such different lives like even just like think about us right what i'm doing right now i'm living in an apartment i'm renting an apartment i have some kids and i'm whatever there's people in like a totally different country living in like a fucking like a hut and maybe they have a farm and just people are so different like everyone has everyone is so different living crazy different lives it's honestly crazy to me i look around all the time when i'm out i was just doing this yesterday when I'm out I look around at people and I always think like every one of these people has a whole life has a whole just like think about that sometimes has a whole life like every single person has a whole 
They have memories. They have a past. They have thoughts. They have wants. They have dreams. They have whatever their life is. They have their job, their family, their friends, their hobbies. Like every person has like a whole life that they're the main character in. Like it's fucking crazy, right? It's like literally crazy. I think about that all the time when I see people. I have two kids. When you're driving, mm -hmm, it's called sonder. There's a word for it. I didn't know that word. What does sonder mean exactly, though? I think that all the time, too, also about the houses or where people live. I look at people and be like, they're the only ones that can see through their eyes, right? Like, I'm right now, I see through my eyeballs, and I, this is my world. But then, like, everyone has that. Like, everyone has that. Sonder, that's very cool. Good night, yes. That's so crazy. Oh, Carly, that's so cute. I feel overwhelmed when I think about it, too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Does anybody else do this? I'm going to sound crazy when I say this, probably. Oh, we're all crazy. You keep telling everyone the loop story? Oh, no! I just ate my last Swedish fish and I didn't even know, so I didn't even enjoy it properly. That's so sad. Yes, and everyone thinks differently. She said your name. <laughs> Being crazy. Yeah, you know what I do a lot too? I don't even know how to explain it. I, like for example, I went to a music festival last weekend, right? There were thousands of people. I think there was something like 50,000 people at every day or something like that. But I like look around at like a group of people and I feel like I'm like connecting with their kind of like, mm, I'm going to sound crazy, kind of like my like higher, not higher self, but it's kind of like connecting with all of theirs. Like, hey guys, like, I love you all. What's, how's everyone doing? Does that make sense to me? I'm, I sound, I don't know how to explain it, but I do this a lot. <laughs> kind of have like a little group connect conversation connect not a full conversation mm -hmm. your energies are connecting like a spider web connecting everyone around yes yes like that your higher self is connecting if they're on the same wavelength yes like that your aura connects with the collective consciousness of souls that's exactly how to fucking explain it i do that all the time i do that all the time friends Thank you so much for saying that I'm not crazy and you understand me. Now I feel like you guys get me. You made me feel understood and seen. So thank you. You want candy now? Yes. Feel the give and receive of energy. Yes. Was the stage a pyramid? No, it wasn't. We feel we met someone. Uh, I can feel the energy in every setting and location. Whoops. Shit. We are all one consciousness. Yes, yes. Oh, I love you all. Thank you for understanding me. I don't know how to ever explain that to anybody, and I feel like I'm crazy. <laughs> so super strong empathy, kind of, I guess. Yes, I'm, I am reading stories. We have read eight stories so far. I'm about to read the ninth, and then we're going to pick another one, possibly two, before I go. If we hit this next gift goal, so I'm going to read one more story that I have. Then we have to pick for the 300K. And if while I'm reading, you guys hit this gift goal or the 400K, we'll read another one too. And then that's going to be it for the night for me. We are all connected. No, I haven't watched Friends. Fringe. You're eating Skittles. Can people hide their R's and make them seem like a different person? I don't know. Maybe. Sonder. What a great word. Jennifer, 
Yeah, if you are, if you subscribed and you have a story, please tell me what it is. And I will gladly do it. Just let me know what the name of it is and I'll write it down and I'll do it if you subscribed. Gift goal easy. <laughs> we are not all empathetic, especially narcissists. That's very true. Everyone calls me crazy for talking about the collective consciousness. Oh. His second chance to happiness. I got you, boo. Thank you so much for telling me your story. I'm sorry if I, sometimes I can't keep up. <laughs> and I, sometimes I can't keep up and I forget to ask. So if you subscribe and you're a new subscriber, be like, hey, I have a story. Here's the name of my story and I'm happy to read it. Sonder, the realization that each random passerby is living a life as vivid and complex as your own. What a beautiful fucking word. I love that. Thank you, Jennifer. Hello, Marina. It's long. Perfect. We love long ones. Every time you say we're all connected, I say in this great circle of life. <laughs> circle of life. So, oh, I know, baby. Oh, baby, do I know. I'm a new subscriber, and I sent a story. You don't have a subscriber thing next to your next to your name, Miss Amy. Following and subscribing are two different things. I get overwhelmed when I'm big groups of people because I can't handle the energy. Yes, Tony. I had a very hard time. I made sure I really cleansed myself, and I really, like, fucking shielded myself and pushed my fucking energy out before my shield and shit out before I went into the festival the first day and it was overwhelming and then I was good I figured it out I was good but I don't normally like lots of people like groups of people because the energy is like a fucking lot my 100 ooh hold on my 130 year old alleged witch house all right got you boo got you boo i sound my story the night that still haunts me oh my god the night that still haunts me got you serena got you serena Got you, Sarah. Uh, you're a new subscriber. Nikki, what's the name of your story? I'm going to be reading as soon as I get these stories written down because now I have one, two, three, four. Five, and then I'll have to pick six and seven because we got a gift goal. Oh my god, guys, it's 1137. I normally Christmas ghost, let me write that down. I normally try to go to bed by midnight, but that's not happening today because it's already 1130 and I have a lot of stories. Christmas ghost, okay. I'm on the East Coast too. These people are keeping us up too late. <laughs> okay. Ooh. I love you guys so much. Listen, I'm putting up another gift goal for funsies, but we're not going to, I'm not going to pick any more stories from the gift goal. I'm going to be, I have one, two, three, four, five stories to read, and then I'm going to pick two more, one for the 300K and one for the gift goal. And then that's going to be it for the night because I got to go to bed at some point. So I'm putting up a gift goal just for funsies. So gift if you want for fun, but it's not it's not for picking any more stories, just to let everybody know. And please feel free to keep tapping the screen and send likes because it still helps me push the live out. Um, it's only 2.08 p.m. I wish. Amy, thank you so much for subscribing. Okay. I f 
you're the only thing keeping me up doing schoolwork. I'll still send gifts. Thank you, Maddie. I love that you're obsessed with me. <laughs> now you're subscribed. Okay, what is your story, Amy? What's the name of your story? Let me write you down. Uncle Matrix is surgery. He has to go to the hospital at 1130 a.m., but the surgery is obviously not going to be like right when he gets to the hospital, but 1130 a.m. is when he's going in there. I think I'm going to get... Um, Thank you, Amy. <laughs> um, Linda, what time is it for you? 8.40 in California. California. Yay. Spirit of high school friend. Okay. You know what? I think I'm going to pick the two stories I have to pick right now, and then we can literally just bang out all the stories in a row. We'll have, like, a nice, just a bunch of stories. So we're going to pick two stories, and then we're going to read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stories, and they're going to be the last eight stories of the night. <clears throat> rapid fire, rapid fire. So if you have a story that you sent at every any point and you would like me to potentially read it right now, please start typing in the comments the name of your story. Whatever you put in the subject line, you can copy and paste it and spam the chat with it. This is the only time you are allowed to spam the chat. And then I'm going to turn around in a minute and we're going to pick two. And these are the last two I'm going to pick for the night. And then we're going to have eight rapid fire stories to read. Dun dun dun. I'm just giving you guys one minute. All right, my deceased aunt, my deceased aunt, and I believe. All right, we got our stories, guys. Here we go. All right, I'm going to start. <laughs> I'm going to stop squirreling, <laughs> and I'm going to rein in the ADHD. And I'm going to start reading stories one after the other. We're going to read eight stories and then the live is going to be done. And hopefully I can go to bed. All right. So the first one <laughs> is, was that you, Larry? Was that you, Larry? Friends, if you have missed any stories or if you just want to rewatch the live, please make sure that you are subscribed to my YouTube. It's Tessica Vision. Same name is here because I will post the recording of this live on YouTube tomorrow. And this happens every time. All my lives are up on YouTube. So please make sure you subscribe. Okay. It's free. We are looking for... Was that you? Larry! Okay. Sorry, I can't. I can't help myself. I'm going to have to ignore the chat a little bit so that I can read. Okay. Okay. Oh, we are starting Was That You, Larry, at 2 hours, 37 minutes. Here we go. Hi, Auntie Matrix. Hi. I always watch your lives, and I've been meaning to write this story for quite a while. It's a long one, but everyone knows we love long ones. Back in 2005, I was pregnant with my oldest son and was hospitalized for a week. I was pretty upset that no one in my family came to visit me. We're a pretty close family, so I knew something was wrong. After I was released, my family broke the news to me that my stepdad, Larry, was diagnosed with terminal cancer. They didn't come to see me in the hospital because they didn't want to cause any more stress on me, as I was already on bed rest, and they didn't want to put me in any more risk of premature labor. I gave birth to my son a few months later, and I had a pretty traumatic birth experience. I'll spare you the details, but the gist is that I almost died. Oh, my goodness. I've always been pretty sensitive, but it definitely got even more intense after that. I started having very vivid dreams of relatives that have passed, seeing things, and just knowing things that I shouldn't have known. My son and I moved in with my parents to help care for my stepdad while my mom was at work. I'm so thankful that we did because my son was the light of his life. They became extremely close and Larry always told everyone about his little buddy. He was a very proud pawpaw. 
In February 2006, Larry took a turn for the worse and ended up in the hospital. I remember one night I was asleep on the couch in his room while he and my mother were talking to his nurse. He sounded so excited as he was telling his nurse that he couldn't wait to get home to see his little buddy and eventually take him on Harley rides. I laid there with my back turned to them with tears rolling from my eyes pretending I was asleep and listening to all the wonderful things he was saying about my family. I knew he wasn't going to leave that hospital and my heart broke. A couple of days later, I got a call from my family that I needed to get to the hospital to say my goodbyes as they didn't think that Larry was going to make it through the night. I got to the hospital and Larry was surrounded by family and friends. We all got our chance to go into his room alone and say our goodbyes. I remember promising him that I would never let my son forget who he was and how much his papa Larry loved him. I told him we loved him so much. I thanked him for being the only dad I'd ever known and a tear fell out of his eye. I told him it was okay to let go. He passed away a few hours later. After it was time to leave, I took my mom home. What happened next, I will never forget. My mom's house is a split-level house with a walkout basement. My mom and stepdad lived downstairs in the basement level, while my brother, my son, and myself lived upstairs. I unlocked the downstairs door to let my mom in, and I walked up the stairs to go to my room. As I rounded the corner, I saw my stepdad in the kitchen with our living cat at his feet, staring up at him. I stood there in shock and he took off into the hallway towards our rooms. Our cat took off running after him. I followed our cat into my bedroom and with hesitation, I said, was that you, Larry? As I said it, I flipped my light switch on and my ceiling light exploded over my head. I was so freaked out. I ran downstairs and told my mom what had just happened. I immediately regretted it as she was completely devastated from just losing her husband hours earlier. I went back upstairs, scared and emotionally exhausted, and I waited on our living room couch for my brother to get home with his girlfriend. I was too afraid to go back into my room, and I needed to talk to somebody about what had just I had just experienced. I ended up falling asleep on the couch while waiting. I woke up sometime later, later because the entire couch started shaking. It felt as though we were having an earthquake. I jumped up, ran into the kitchen, and my brother's girlfriend ran in at the same time. We asked each other what that was and we were both extremely shaken up she had fallen asleep in my brother's room and was woken up by the shaking too my mom and brother didn't feel anything and after looking it up there were no reported earthquakes in our area the following days there were even more strange occurrences my mom was in her closet looking for some paperwork and getting extremely frustrated after looking for over an hour she said where the hell is it and immediately after the paper she was looking for floated down off the top shelf landing at her feet she came into the laundry room while I was washing clothes and told me what had just happened. She said she knew it was Larry and that she'd been hearing him calling her name from his recliner the night before. All of a sudden, the washer lid slammed shut. The day of his funeral, I was getting dressed in my bathroom. My cousin stood outside of the door while I was telling her about everything that had been happening in the house. And as I was talking, three small butterfly tea lights flew off my shelf, landing in front of my cousin. She bolted out of the house and refused to go back in. We had a few other things that had happened, but after the funeral things, but after the funeral, things seemed to have settled down around the home. A couple of days later, I was home alone with my baby asleep in his crib. His room is at the back of the house, and I was watching TV in the living room, so I had the baby monitor on. I started hearing very loud static over the monitor, and I got up to go check on my son. As I was turning to go into his hallway, a ball of light flo floated out of his room down the hall, hovered in front of me for a few seconds, and flew off. I ran to go check on my son, but he was sleeping peacefully. I truly believe that was my stepdad saying goodbye to his little buddy. The end. Oh, right? Strong spirit. Oh, my goodness. Okay, hold on. We're voting... Did you like that story? Happy face for yes and a sad face for no. What a strong, you're crying. I know it was really hard in the beginning for me not to cry. <laughs> Honestly, that was very emotional. Very emotional in the beginning. But yes, what a strong spirit. I guess he was hanging out like until after his funeral and then he was said goodbye. He said goodbye to your son, his little buddy. Oh, he said goodbye to his little buddy. That was a beautiful story. Yes. 
you had those experiences with your dad? I had a couple. So the thing um, about when your mom was looking for the papers and then they just like randomly floated. I had that kind of stuff happen after my grandfather passed away. And we, me and my ex-husband used to go to my grandmother's house all the time. And we would like help her with stuff, whatever she needed and hang out with her and stuff. And a couple times we had to go into his workshop to get some tools, like to do something. And I remember a couple times we couldn't find something. And literally like my ex-husband would ask me like, you know, Cosmo, can you help? Like, where is this? Can you help me? Like, where is this thing? And it would just like a box would open and it would be there. Or like, it would just be, it was really cool. Hold on. Mr. Are you feeding them? Go ahead, Odin. So beautiful. Your dad's voice came out of Alexa. Oh, that's so cool. I just lost my mom and she definitely hung around for a few days. I have a video of her visiting my brother. Oh, that's amazing. Yes, that was uncle. My husband's story is told as if he was talking to me, just so you're aware. Oh, okay. You were muted? You shouldn't have been muted. If you were muted, Maddie, that was an accident. Someone accidentally muted you, probably. My uncle called my dad's house. Sounded like bad reception. What? Oh, That was a beautiful story. Thank you so, so much for sharing. Thank you so, so much. What a beautiful story. Larry! Sounds like a great man. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a great man. Thank you, though. That was really, really beautiful. Um, okay, this and this. <clears throat> and now we are doing his second chance to happiness. His second chance to happiness. We're starting at two hours, 46 minutes. Okay. His second chance to happiness. This was my husband's glitch. He called it his second chance to happiness. It is told from his perspective to me. Oh, his perspective to me, his wife. As a preface, it includes my children, Zoe, eight years old, Xander, five years old, and Elena, four months. We lost twins in our first pregnancy, and Xander holds one of their names as his, and he speaks to his older brother, Xavier, frequently in this timeline. Also, we are a family who follow Norse, Norse, oh my God, I can't fucking pronounce this, Norse polytheism, which is relevant. What is that? What is Norse polytheism? Good night, Jen. I love you. Mwah. Good night. The belief in multiple Norse gods. Okay, cool. So this glitch took place four years in the future before I came back to this reality. What? So baby Elena was born. We got her a pink polka dot car seat. You ended up getting a silver 2016 Traverse and got your license straightened out down here in Georgia from New York after being here for five years. I was at work while you were talking, to, taking the kids to the mall. You were on Interstate 95 and were slowing down in traffic. A Telsa truck behind you and malfunctioned. Later, it came out that the navigation system was hacked, making the truck think it was in a different country, Germany to be precise, where the speed limit was extremely high. The Autobahn specifically, which has no actual speed limit. The truck accelerated into your vehicle. You were in the driver's seat. Elena was directly behind you, and Zoe was in the back bench behind the baby, and Xander, and Xander was in the other captain's chair beside the baby behind the passenger seat. The truck reached a speed high enough to tear through the driver's side of the Traverse. The reason it hit only the driver's side was because you saw the truck hurling towards you. The truck tore through the whole driver's side, killing Zoe, Elena, and you instantly. 
Xander got a broken arm up to his elbow because he was playing with the baby. I get notified of the accident and fly to the hospital expecting to find you all only to find Xander. All of the previous information was given to me during the trial after I sued the Tesla company. The truck had a black box that recorded all of its driving via cameras in the truck. I won the lawsuit and was awarded $7.9 billion for the loss of my wife and two children plus lifetime psychological treatment for Xander. Originally, I sued for only $750 million plus the cost of services for the three of you and for Xander's hospital visit. <clears throat> During the trial, the judge had to give me five separate recesses so I could make my deposition for the case on why I felt I was entitled to that much money. I made my case by explaining that without you, both mine and the life of my only surviving child would be so empty because of how much you really did for us. You weren't just his mother. You were his caretaker for everything. When I was away making a living for us to survive, you were his teacher, his best adult friend, his mentor. His sister was his best friend, and his youngest sister never got to know him or me or anyone else that she passed away with. The judge not only granted us the decision, she told me that because of my unstable state of mind from the loss I had just endured from the loss of a partner that was such a pivotal person in both mine and Xander's life that she could only award us with 10 times what we were asking for. Following that, which she knows that no amount of money could ever replace what we had lost. After the first year of pain and torture with grieving the loss of 60% of my family, I decided to pay off all my debts. I get my passport and Xander's passport, and I ask him, if he can go anywhere in the world, where would you want to go? He says, to mom. We have a long talk about the fact that we can't just go to you because you are with... <clears throat> You are with hell waiting for us with Zoe and the baby. He decides he wants to go where he thought that you would want to go. We end up traveling to Norsund, just north of Bjor. I'm assuming these are, I don't know what those are. In Norway, okay. And purchased a house. We chose that area because it was off the beaten path and there weren't many large transport slash cargo trucks. Xander had PTSD from what happened. We built a farm plot with six goats, three cows, three beef and three dairy, and 18 chickens. Xander learns to carve and whittle and ends up losing the tip of his left ring finger. He ends up carving statues of you and Zoe to place on his altar next to Freya, Hell, and Angerboda. I don't know if I'm saying that right. We live there for almost a year when he starts to fall hard into depression. And one day after I finish with his lesson, he goes out to gather wood for another carving. He doesn't come back until late and I am furious. He walks in the house with no wood to carve, only a handful of fly agaric mushrooms. I ask him what they are and he tells me he was walking in the woods looking for the perfect piece of wood to make his final statue for his never born brother. As he looks, a cloaked man with a raspy voice and an eye patch gave them to him. He told Xander to bring these to me and take them with Xander in a satire, S-I-T-Y-R. He said we can have a do-over in life. I wake up next to you and realize I'm here with you again after four years and I cry holding you as you sleep. Oh my God. The end. Sater, Sater. Wow. Reverie, thank you so much for subscribing. That was crazy. What the actual fuck? Hold on. We are going. Shit. See, it always comes together in the end. Yes. You guys are confused. Oh, shit. We're in a sub wave. We need three more subs in the next 14 minutes. Okay, hold on. I, we're going to vote. Did we like that story? Happy face for yes and sad face for no. Basically. Okay. So, basically, this is the dad. This is her husband, like, telling the story as, he was ta as if he's talking to her, right? And, basically, he had, he had the life and... They were driving, they got in a car accident, and everyone dies except for one of his sons. They do a lawsuit, he wins a bunch of money for the lawsuit, they go and they decide to go live somewhere, you know, they're just trying to, like, survive. They go move to friggin' Norway, they live there, they get some chickens and some goats and stuff, 
And then the sun one time, one day, thank you, Renata, for subscribing, is walking in the woods looking for wood to carve because now he's into carving wood. And uh, an old man gives him these mushrooms and says, like, you can have a do-over life. Like, take these and you can have a do you can do over. You can have a do-over in your life. And he goes home. The dad and the son take them. And the dad wakes up as if that never happened, basically, with the whole family. That's what happened. Crazy. Always eat the mushrooms. <laughs> Always eat the mushrooms. Maddie! Oh, thank you so much. Shell, thank you so much for subscribing. Did it really happen? I mean, I think it really happens. As far as I know, all the stories that are sent to me that I read are people's real, actual stories. That is insane, right? Insane. Maddie, thank you. Oh my God, Maddie is seriously crazy. The universe is so crazy. Did they still live in Norway? That's a great question. Did they still live in Norway? Did you guys still live in Norway? Not a dream. Not a dream. He lived an entire four years of life without, yes, without them. And then he got a do-over. You're in Georgia now. Guys, we need two more subscribers for the sub wave. We have 13 minutes to get them. You're still confused? <laughs> Where were they? Maddie from another universe added again. Yes, does the sun remember it too? That is a great question. He made sure our traverse we got was white and not silver. Okay. Does the sun remember? I feel like it was like before the, before the crash. Like they went back to maybe before the crash. Is that right or is that not right? Before the crash. Does Xander remember? Do they still have the money? I don't think they have the money. <laughs> the money was a result of the crash. So I'm assuming they don't have the money. Maddie! Thank you! <laughs> thank you so much! Oh my god. I literally don't even, I can't even with you. <laughs> That's my galaxy dance. There's just way too much info for that not to have been real and not just a dream. Agree, agree. Yeah, wait, did, but wait, uh, does Xander remember is my question. Because he's the one that got the mushrooms and they ate them. And if the husband remembers, does Xander remember? That's my last question. And then I'm going to move on to the next story. Yes, yeah, she is on here. Her name is Jessica. She's here. The audience wants to know. The audience wants to know. Not you, Jessica. <laughs> Send a flying witch. We need to see that one. Ooh, what's a flying witch? I want to see a flying witch. This is not Justin's story. No. Different Jessica. Not our Jess. No. I know there's too many Jessicas. Amanda, thank you so much for subscribing. Guys, we only need one more sub. We have nine minutes and 40 seconds to get one more sub because we're in a sub wave. It is a great story. Did she leave? Morgan, thank you so much for resubscribing. Team Jessica, woo! Is she here? Did she leave? Did the storyteller leave? You're here. We want to know if Xander remembers. No, that was Jen who said she had to go to bed. It does sound like a Black Mirror episode. When they were good, not this season, which sucks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Lisa, thank you so much for subscribing. Yes, we did it. Just your husband remembers. That's interesting. I wonder why your husband remembers, but your son doesn't. When your son was the one who got the mushrooms. That's very interesting. Thank you so much for sharing, guys. Wait, did we vote? We did vote, right? Did we vote? I don't remember, but I think we voted. Yes, we did. Okay, cool. <sighs> Woo! Okay, we got one, two, three, four, five. Shit, we got six more stories to go, and it's already 12 o'clock. Maybe to shield him from the pain of the other life. Oh, maybe. We have six more stories. I normally get off at 12. <laughs> you miss my random musicals. <laughs> have you really, Jackie? <laughs> I can hear you singing musicals with that voice. <laughs> okay, I'm finding the next story. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, okay, this one... And this one, and this one, and this one. And we are now reading my 130-year-old alleged witch house. My 130-year-old alleged witch house. And we're starting it at 2 hours and 59 minutes. <clears throat> Here we go. Hey, hi, my name is Sarah. Hello, Sarah. As my subject says, I live in a 130-year-old house where an alleged witch lived. It just happens to be right next door to a cemetery. I share my backyard with the cemetery. Oh, my God. Let me tell you, so much weird stuff happens almost every day. Let me start off with the shortened history of my house. A man and a woman lived here from 19... Um, oh, 19. Oh, my God. Nope. A man and a woman lived here from 1895 until 1947. A man lived here, and the woman, his sister, was the alleged witch. The man died, and his sister continued to live here. Eventually, after much harassment for some people in our small town, she moved further into the country to get away from everyone. My house sat, my house sat empty for 30 years before my in-laws bought it. When they went to move in, there were black snakes everywhere in the house, in the barns, on the property, etc. Also, sage was hanging in every corner of the house. When they decided to remodel, after removing all the snakes, lol, they removed all the fucking snakes. <laughs> they bought the house with the snakes. Why? Why? When they decided to remodel, after removing all the snakes, there was a pentagram carved into the hardwood floor upstairs. They just covered it up with carpet and moved on. Not very smart. <laughs> Not very smart. My 86-year-old father-in-law swears that there is nothing going on in the house, but I beg to differ. Story one. I moved in this house six years ago. At first, nothing happened until it did. I was sitting in the living room, home alone, just watching TV and scrolling mindlessly. I heard a noise in my kitchen and assumed it was my dog. Next thing I know, I hear water running. I walked into the kitchen and my faucet was on full blast. I turned it off and assumed it was a fluke. I return to my mindless scrolling. About 10 minutes or so later, I hear a bang and water running. I jumped up and went in the kitchen and a chair was laying on the floor and the water was running full blast again. Let's just say I sat on my front porch until my husband got home. When he got home, I was freaked out and I told him what had happened. He said, oh, damn, well, get ready because stuff like that here happens all the time. Um, excuse me, sir. <laughs> Side note, my husband has lived here his whole life. He is 32. He just moves about when weird stuff happens because he's used to it. Story two. This happened Monday, October 2nd, 2023. Oh, so like it literally just happened. I woke up, made my four-year-old's breakfast, and took her to the school for fall break camp. I came home and went about my business. The usual dishes, vacuum, laundry, the works. I was in my bedroom folding laundry and putting it away. My son was in his playpen and my 86-year-old father-in-law was asleep in his bed. Per usual, I was listening to true crime, just doing my thing. I heard some scuffing coming from the kitchen and just brushed it off to be my elderly dog. Then I heard it. I heard, Mommy, Mommy, coming from my kitchen. It was my daughter's voice. She was at fall camp. 
I brushed it off as maybe just hearing something. 20 minutes go by and I hear it again, but more of a quiet tone. I was like, nope, maybe they dropped her off without alerting me. I walked into my kitchen and no one was there. I walked all around my house and found nothing that could explain what I heard. I will send more stories at a later date. I probably have like 50 different stories. Nothing has ever felt harmful and luckily nothing bad has ever happened. Keep on keeping on. All the good vibes, Sarah. Who the end? Who the end? Oh my God. Ugh. Chills, chills. Okay, we are voting. Did we like the story? Happy face for guests and a sad face for no. First of all, I just can't get over the fact that we bought a house full of snakes. They saw this 130-year-old house, and they said, had a bunch of snakes in it. They were like, oh, look, there's a bunch of black snakes everywhere. Let's buy it. Let's buy it. They didn't know there were snakes? Okay. Okay, so they bought it, and then there were snakes. But then we see a big pentagram, and we're like, no big deal. We'll just cover it up. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's really, really cheap. Oh, and a pentagram? No. That's fine. It's cool. We'll just put a carpet over it. I'm sure it's good. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> yes, the husband lived there his whole life. Yes. Because it's, it's, so it's her in-law's house, right? So the in-laws bought the house, which means the in-laws are her husband's parents. So he lived there his whole life. And then she moved in about six years ago, I guess, after they were together. I wonder if they smoked the snakes out. No biggie. Just some ghosties. Yeah, <laughs> I liked the story though. Run from that house. Okay, well, I'm glad though that you don't feel that anything bad is going on. Like nothing malicious, right? I'm I'm happy about that. Nothing harmful. Nothing harmful. The daughter's voicing fucking freaks me out. I feel like that has the potential to be harmful, right? Because spirits don't normally mimic a voice unless it's like a mimic. Yeah, spirits using your family's voice, like, mm -mm, mm -mm, not okay. And I feel like the snakes are bad, too. You think there's, like, a big curse on there because of the alleged witch? It's a mimic, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we know, like, mimics. Well, she didn't see. I wouldn't say doppelganger because she didn't see. So S. Walker, no, because they normally just... Maybe. And the sage. My daughter's voicing happens to my friend often. Nope. I didn't see anything, just heard the voice. Yes. So that's that's a mimic. That's definitely a mimic. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. I gotta move on to the next story if I ever want to go to bed. But thank you so so much <laughs> for sharing your story. Yeah, okay. Whew, whew, whew. Okay, the witch. The next one is the night that still haunts me. Let's put this here. The night that still haunts me. Ooh, these are all long ones. I like it. The night that still haunts me. I'm updating this gift goal for funsies. Oh no, it says add a live gift goal, but there is a gift goal up. Never mind. Okay, the night that still haunts me. We're starting at three hours and seven minutes. Here we go. Hi, Indie Matrix. Hi. I love your content and need to know your thoughts on this. I had multiple experiences as a young girl, and I would love to share one of the earliest bizarre ones. The majority of my experiences happened in my childhood home. From my earliest memories, I always felt uneasy about that house and had seen my dead cat walking in the hallway or something. When I was about six to seven years old, one of the experiences, my mom nor I still to this day cannot explain, and the more that we talk about it, the more crazy it is. My room was upstairs and closest to the stairs. My parents' room was right next to mine, which was the last room on the side of our hallway, and the only other room upstairs 
Uh, the only other rooms upstairs was a spare bedroom and a bathroom on the other side, which from where my bed was, I could see both of those closed doors. At that time, I still had a nightlight and a very strong one, so bright that my parents slept with their door closed too because it lit up the hall so much. I was looking out my doorway and all of a sudden, I seen my mom going from her room past mine to go downstairs. I never heard her door open or anything. I called out mommy and she looked at me over her shoulder and didn't skip a beat, just continued to walk, looking at me and walking past my doorway. Oh, I don't like that already. I already have chills. I don't like it already. Hold on. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. But as soon as she looked at me, there was something off about her. Yes, I know. I say I know like I was there. Her eyes were too dark but vivid too. I can't explain it, but definitely not normal and definitely not my mom's light green. My mom is 5'3 and she has and she had this pink fuzzy robe that she wore on occasion that was about mid calf length, so fairly long, but never touching the ground that hung on the back of her door. This is important too. This version of my mom barely reached the doorknob on the bathroom door and the robe was dragging feet behind her as she walked past my room so she was like really short this is like really freaking me out to really add to it the pockets were even flat on the ground dragging that's how short this thing was it terrified me and i instantly had a feeling of do not make a sound or move wash over me and felt an uncomfortable chill and it wasn't something that you blink and it's gone either. Once mom was out of sight, I still watched the robe drag past the doorway. And I never heard the stairs creaking either, which is also odd. Oh, my God. I eventually went to sleep. How? Not a clue. Then the next morning, my mom was upset with me because she wanted to know when I went into her room and asked Whoa, why I took her robe off her door. As there was no way I could have done that without waking her. No. I need my core key. I'm so, I have such bad chills. I told her I didn't and why she said that. And she told me, why is my robe downstairs then? instantly i went pale started crying and full on hysterical i told her what happened and she started to worry as well because how her robe was laying on the floor there was no way i could do that just tossing it down the stairs nor have it look the way that it did if i was wearing it and took it off it was some um it was if someone tall taller than that version of her and of course taller than my six seven year old self shrugged out of it and it fell straight down there was no way how to explain how it got down there in that position when my parents both denied it and i never left my room i'm now 33 years old and i can still get goosebumps thinking of that night and that version of her i still remember all the details of that night and everything is still so vivid like it happened yesterday what do you think it was that i had seen the and oh my god this is the first I guess the first story tonight that gave me like legit real good chills. Hold on, we're gonna we're gonna uh, vote. Did we like that story? Happy face for yes and a sad face for no. Guys, what was that? What was it? I don't I'm trying to think of what that could be that was so short. But it was like a so it was like a tiny version of your mom that was wearing your mom's robe your mom's actual robe <gasps> what could that be i don't know i don't know what do you guys think it was <sighs> i need like i have massive goosebumps same 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 i need water i'm terrified of walking across my dark room oh my god a goblin <gasps> oh a goblin terrifying that's what it was I believe it. I saw a version of my daughter and I touched her and it melted into the floor. What? Stop it. Shapeshifter, doppelganger. But why was it so short? Ghost wanted to play dress up. It's called a bakru. A bakru? What is that? B-A-K. 
Oh, a Bakru. Oh no, that's Bak Baku. Baku, B A C C O O. Maybe this is the wrong thing. The robe would be in the trash. Yes. How old did she say she was now? Uh, now she is. Where did it just go? 33. She's 33 now. I don't want to go to the bathroom. I'm about to take my four year olds with me. I hit the sad face on accident. That's okay. A demon hitchhiker. My closet door just opened. A shifter that is just starting out isn't good at the job. Oh, interesting. <sighs> Guys. You're saying Bakru, B-A-K-R-U, but when I look that up, I don't, I don't find anything. Oh, creatures of myth. Bakru, lurking around derelict structures of South America, these dwarfish fairies are half fleshy and half wooden and are capable of using powerful dark magic, magic to discourage trespassers on their territory. They're sometimes known to work for people that pay them, although if not paid, they will become murderous and impossible to get rid of. Interesting. Oh my god, I'm so scared. I'm in the kid. I'm in the car heading back home and I'm scared to look outside. Oh my god. Are these stories true? As far as I know, these stories are true. People send in their personal experiences that have happened, and that's what we're reading. Pay them. Pay them. <laughs> I'm glad you never saw that thing again, but holy smokes. That was very scary. Very scary. Sounds like a Dobby. No, Dobby's sweet. <laughs> Take my money and leave. Attract them with milk and bananas in a bottle. Then they get in the bottle and jam it with a cork. So at the end, so in the beginning, she said, Raw, thank you so much for subscribing. Um... <sighs> Oh my God, guys, I still have so many stories. I have four more stories to read and it's so late. Um, so in the beginning, no, she said it was so small, didn't even come up to the doorknob, but they said not that the thing was tall, but the way that the robe fell onto the floor, like the position that the robe was in looked like as if someone really tall was wearing it and just like shrugged it off their shoulders. Does that make sense? That's what they're saying. Unusual to be just once. I think. That's what I got from it. Oh, my God. Hi, Allie. <sighs> I think the robe fell off because they were no longer manifesting their body. Oh, mate. The fairy flew out of it. <gasps> oh, yes. So it just dropped to the floor as they disappeared. Very interesting. Oh my God. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I'm going to move on just because I need to go to bed soon, but I was a really, really good one. Thank you so, so much. Um, by the way, anybody who I've read your stories tonight, just keep a little eyeball out because I may or may not send you like a book release form if you would like me to potentially include this in the book that I'm putting together because I'm just, I'm pretty much done with it. I'm just like grabbing some extra stories if I can. Um, so just keep a lookout on your email your email oh <gasps> katie joe thank you so pretty all right our next one is christmas ghost let's go to christmas ghost all right christmas ghost is three hours and 17 minutes here we go i still have my corgi <laughs> all right i'm gonna put my corgi down for now we'll see if i need it again one christmas eve my sisters and their kids and husbands were spending the night at my mom and my house so we could spend Christmas morning together. Suddenly, my sister yelled for me and sounded super freaked out from the sitting room. When I asked her what was going on, this is what she said. 
I had sent to bed quite a while ago. I walked out of the front room into the adjacent kitchen, which led into a sitting area. The only thing separating the kitchen from a sitting area was a counter a little higher than waist high. I glanced into the sitting area as I walked into the kitchen. In the corner furthest away from me stood a little girl who at the split second I thought was my oldest daughter. I opened my mouth to tell her angrily to get to bed, concerned that she would see the surprises we had for the children the next day. Barely a sound came out of my mouth before I clamped it shut because I came to the realization that this child has almost the exact opposite colorations from my daughter and seemed a bit older. A bit in shock, I watched as the child faded away and I could see the corner china cabinet again. I shook my head and went to check to see if all the children were still in bed. They were all passed out asleep, including my eldest daughter. The next day after going to my grandma's house for Christmas, I wasn't feeling well, so I came home to get some sleep. I was a little worried about the ghost that my sister saw, but I just said, you better leave me alone and let me get some sleep or I will barf on you. <laughs> And went to bed. I asked her to send me what she remembered so I could type up the story. The end. Oh, hold on. We're going to vote. Did we like that story? Happy face for yes. And a sad face for no. Little children ghosts are very scary. And I don't understand why. But they just are. They're just very scary. Whew. My goodness. I liked that one. Thank you so much for sharing. I wonder if we ever saw this ghost again. I wonder what it was exactly. But why was it standing in the corner? And was it like facing the corner? In the corner stood a girl. Because in my brain, it's facing the corner, right? Like those creepy fucking dolls. You know what I'm talking about? Like those creepy hide-and-go-seek dolls or time-out dolls or whatever. It was looking at your sister. Nope. That makes it worse. No, 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 thank you. Alternate reality. Oh, yes. Uh, we do have that theory that possibly spirits are actually just like other timelines bleeding over. <sighs> it was stare was looking at you. That's not okay. That's not okay. That makes it even worse. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm going to keep it moving because I need to go to bed soon. Spirit of high school friend. Hold on one sec. Spirit of high school. Is this it? Uh, Spirit of high school friend pulls us to his old house. Is that right? I want to make sure that's right. An Appalachian Mountain series? I don't know where I would get all those stories. Yes. Okay, cool. Spirit of high school friend pulls us to his old house. Interesting. Okay, here we go. Ready? And we are starting this at 3 hours and 22 minutes. <clears throat> Here we go. Dear NT Matrix, I love your content and have been binging it for the past few hours, so I feel inspired to share this super strange story that happened to me and three of my best friends in high school. We grew up in the 90s in a town where there wasn't a lot to do besides get into mischief, so my friends and I were driving around one night looking for a place to smoke a blunt because we're delinquents. <laughs> My friends suggested this abandoned house of another one of our mutual acquaintances. It was a, properly, uh, a property owned by this guy's family, but nobody had lived there in a long time, and it was all run down with missing locks, windows, busted out, etc. Local kids had named it the Eighth Dimension, and they used to have parties there all the time. I had never been, so I was like, meh, sure, that's fine, not knowing what it was like. When we got there, I began to feel immediately freaked out. It was evening, and this place was down a long driveway in the woods and was covered in graffiti and lit by a single tall lamp pole. 
pole lamp that was oddly on, maybe to try to scare away teenagers partying there. I told my friend who was driving that it was way creepy there, that there was no way in hell I was going in that house, so let's smoke in the car. So she turned around in the driveway, and we were facing the street because I was so uncomfortable there. We had the car running, but all the windows down because we didn't want the car to reek, and I remember it was a nice evening. We were smoking, listening to music, laughing, when all of a sudden my friend, who was normally not afraid of anything and did not freak out easily, says, Oh my God, what the fuck is that? A giant gust of wind picked up. It got very cold and we heard frantic, heavy footsteps running toward the car. We all looked around to see if it was an animal or something making the noise. My first thought was a bear or a person because the footsteps were so heavy, but we didn't see anything. Because our normally calm friend was freaking out, that made us all freak out 10 times harder, and I told my friend in the driver's seat to just fucking go. She put the car in drive and floored the gas pedal, and the car engine revved, and the wheels spun frantically, but the car wouldn't move. She was yelling, I'm trying, the car won't go, the car won't go. She threw it in park and back into drive, and eventually the car lurched towards forward, and we got down the driveway and back on the road. She knows she wasn't in neutral the first time because you could hear the tires spinning. We were all laughing but totally freaked out, but we felt so relieved that we got out of there that we were all kinds of shook uh, that we all kind of shook it off and went about our evening. And we were not super high because this was 90s dirt weed. <laughs> We only had a tiny amount, and there were four of us. Also, no way we could have imagined the exact same thing happening. The next day, we found out that the acquaintance whose family owned the house died in a terrible car crash on a road very near the house where we were. Because it was so tragic that a young teenager died in such an awful crash, the county actually decided to completely redo that windy road through the woods that he crashed on to make it a four-lane straight road. When we found out that our friend slash acquaintance is passing, we were absolutely shocked and sad but we were also really freaked out about what happened at that house we just randomly happened to be partying at that house at the very same time that he crashed and passed away wait i thought when you were saying that you found out that that person died in a car crash near where you were that it had happened in the past you're saying the same time that you were there the crash happened we just randomly happened to be partying at that house at the very same time he crashed and passed away. Why did we choose to go there on that exact evening at that time? Maybe we were supposed to be in the crash. If we hadn't stopped in that spot, we would have been traveling in the area where our other friend crashed around the same time. My calm friend thought that was our family's, our friend's way of saying goodbye and his ghost was running up to us to get a hit of the blunt before he moved on. <laughs> which would totally be something this guy would do to this day. None of us can really make sense of what happened, but we all remember it pretty vividly. Thanks for sharing these stories. I love to freak myself out listening to them. The end. Oh my God. Okay. We are, uh, we are voting. Hold on one second. Did you like that story? Happy face for yes. And a sad face for no. What a crazy story. Hold on one second. I'm just trying to see something. That is so crazy that you guys were there at the same time. This sounds like the cemetery story that I read before. I don't remember that. He probably was wanting to say goodbye. Oh my God. There's only going to be two more stories, my dear, and then we are done for the night. Whoever said that about their sister making them watch, it just made me laugh so unbelievably hard. I don't know what, I don't know what you guys are talking about, but that is freaking, cr and I don't know what cemetery one you guys are talking about. I don't remember anyone where It happened that like someone's person died at the exact same time they were there. Or he didn't know he had passed. That's true. He was trying to stop them from leaving. I feel like a child whose mom is reading to them. 
how often do I go live? I don't have any specific days or time that I go live. Um, I am a divorced mom with joint custody of kids. So, and it's like on a rotating schedule. So I go live when I don't have my kids and when I don't have other things, a million other things to do. I try to go live once or twice a week. Last week it was only once. This week it has been only once. Um, so I'm not really sure, but the best thing to do is to be in my discord, join the discord. If you click on the link in my bio, the link, um, it takes you to all my links and the link to discord is there. It's also, it's uh, dsc.gg slash anti matrix. Come join the discord. We have like over 1400 people in there. Everyone is welcome. Um, and I have an announcements channel in discord where I will at everybody and I'll tell you when I'm going live. Like yesterday I posted in there and I and added, I said, I'm going to be live tomorrow at around 8 or 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. When I do go live though, it's normally at night. It's normally between 8, 8 and 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when I'll start. And I normally stay on until 12. Thank you. You've heard me read that. I don't remember this story whatsoever. The supernatural chat is your favorite in Discord? 12-ish. Well, I normally would be off, but we had a bunch of stories for me to read. Okay. Whew, that was a good one. Thank you so much. Goddess, thank you so much for subscribing. <laughs> um, okay. We have two more stories that we are reading, and then I need to get offline. I need to go to bed. Possible Halloween special. That's interesting. My deceased aunt is next. My deceased aunt. We are reading my deceased aunt at three hours and 30 minutes. Here we go. Hi, Indie Matrix. Hi. This is a redo of my last story I sent. I figured I would add some trigger warnings. Okay, so trigger warning for miscarriage and infant death. My dad had an older sister named Annalisa. He never met her as she died when she was only three days old. My grandma, my dad's mom, had six miscarriages previously. A few years later, she had my dad. He was born premature and had to stay in the NICU for a while. He is deaf, not sure if it's because he was born premature or something else. Not important to the story, just details. My grandma tried so hard to have a baby and she finally had my dad. I'm so glad he is deaf rather than unalived. Anyway, his sister's name was Annalisa, which is now my middle name. Ever since I was little, I felt a presence around me, not all the time, just randomly. I just always knew it was Annalisa, even before I knew about her. I felt comfortable in the presence and safe. It felt like a friend. One day I was home alone. I walked into the kitchen and I had felt her presence all day long. At the time, the silverware was placed in a cup holder. Not sure if this makes sense. It was a silverware holder labeled forks, spoons, etc. But they were sitting upright in small cups. I got you. They were far enough away from the entrance, unable to have caught on to my hair or clothes. I walked in and heard the silverware clank. I turned around and they were moving like they had just been spun around. I turned and said, Annalisa, please stop. I don't feel like being scared right now. I'm sorry. Immediately, I felt her presence vanish and I have never felt her presence around me since. I feel bad. I hope she didn't get upset. To this day, I hope she will come back. I miss not feeling alone all the time. She always knew when I needed her around the... And yes, Katie Jo, kitchen ghost stuff freaks me out as well. But in this case, it was just one little second and she knew who it was and the person listened. This, hold on, hold on. We're going to vote. We're going to vote. We're voting. Do we like that story? Happy face for yes and sad face for no. Please vote. <clears throat> oh my God. <clears throat> I have a frog in my throat. There's a frog in my throat. Um, I don't think you upset her. I just, I feel like spirits, especially, uh, specifically the ones that are family members, um, are very receptive to that and they will listen because they don't want to scare you, right? <laughs> they don't want to scare you. Katie Jo, forever rose. Thank you. So if you tell them like, please don't scare me, 
you know, please don't, you're scaring me, like they'll go. Yes, and time is different for them too. So she could come back at some point, maybe when she feels that you are not scared. You know what I mean? The kitchen stuff does freak me out. Kitchen stuff really freaks me out. That one wasn't so bad. It's when they are fucking with the kitchen, right? When, oh, when cabinets are left open, when chairs are stacked up. Can't talk about it. Can't talk about it. Freaks me out so bad. <laughs> Not even because knives got us. I don't even think about knives. N have never even thought about knives. Good to see you too, Christy. You can ask her to come back. Yes. <sighs> it's the small kids for you. Okay. You managed to read every story like the same person wrote it. So good at reading. Thank you so much. That's a very nice compliment. So before you go to bed out loud, say, Annalise, I really want to talk to you or see you. I miss you. Or maybe she'll visit in a dream. Once I did a Ouija board and a girl told me after lifetime is slower so she would be much older than me. There is no time. There's no time in the afterlife. It's time is like an earth thing. It's a, it's a 3D thing. It's a thing. Time is not a real thing. <laughs> Just not in the kitchen. I, w <laughs> I want you to... Uh, uh, I want you to visit me, but just not in the kitchen. <laughs> we have one more story. Yeah, spirits don't grow old. They just are. Yeah, man made up time. <laughs> okay, we're going to go for this last story. It's called, I believe. It's going to be the last story of the night. You can send stories to glitches.tessicavision at gmail.com. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your story, though, so. I believe. Do you believe? I believe. Ah, shit. I believe person, can you please tell me the first part of your email address so I can look for this story because there's a lot of stuff with believe in it. <laughs> Time is a construct made for us to experience life. It's part of our dimension here. Ba bum bum bum. Ba bum 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 bum. Ba bum bum bum. Oh, happy day. <laughs> Was I singing that, Jenny? Oh, happy day. Yay. I don't remember the pics of a mimic. No. I'm just waiting for I Believe, the person with I Believe. Thank you, Gay. You wash my sins away. Oh, happy day. He taught me how. Oh, he taught me how to. I can't. <laughs> Guys, where else I? She sent several. He was looking over his shoulder. I can't remember. My memory is poopy. Thank you, Gayliz. She said, Mama, th Mama Thaisler. Oh, happy day. I don't have that one. I have the stairs to the attic. sent it tonight oh 
You sent it to the wrong email. I find it. I got it. Okay, here we go. Last story. It's a little short one. We're going to read it. It's called I Believe. Here we go. Three hours, 38 minutes. Boom. <laughs> Trigger warning for CSA. What is that? What is... Oh. Never mind. I think I got it. I am a Christian and believe in the power of prayer and the Bible being the word of God. As a child, I was essayed by my stepdad multiple times. <sighs> One day after my stepdad left my room, oh my God, this fucking breaks my heart and makes me angry at the same time. I crawled up in the middle of my bed and cried out to God. As I finished praying, I saw Jesus standing at the head of my bed and told me that I was his and he reached into his robe to anoint my head with his oil. He disappeared and I reached up to touch my head. I felt the oil. About two weeks later, I met the person who helped me get out of the abuse and was there for me as I reported him. She became my foster sister and we are still close friends slash sisters 40 years later. That's a wonderful ending to the story. That's it. The end. That is a really, really, I'm, I'm glad. I am so sorry slash really fucking mad about the first part. But I'm really happy that you met someone that helped you get out of the situation and was your foster sister. And 40 years later, you are still there. <sighs> still good. Thank you so much for sharing your story. We are voting. Did you like that story? Happy face for yes and a sad face for no. To Thank you, Katie Jewel, for the little bit of rose. For the cute little rose, I like it. Um, okay, guys. Thank you so, so much. I am going to get offline. It is almost 1 a.m. and I need to go to bed. Um, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much if you came to hang out today. Thank you for sharing your stories. Thank you for chatting and commenting and tapping the screen and sending the gifts and subscribing. And thank you, moderators, for moderating and uh being amazing i love you guys so much and i appreciate every single one of you thank you for being you i love you never stop being you um i'm not sure when i'm gonna be live next so please make sure that you join my discord so that you will know that um if you click on the link in my bio it has all of my links and one of them is discord everyone is welcome in discord please come in and hang out with us um and there's an announcements channel where I announce when I'm going live, when I'm posting a YouTube video, when I'm dropping new merch and all those kind of things. So make sure that you are joined in the Discord. If you are a new subscriber or a TikTok live subscriber and you are in Discord, let me know. You can at me in there. Hey, Antimatrix, I'm a new subscriber. And I will give you your subscriber role and access to the sub only chat. Um... Also, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube, which is Tessica Vision. The same name is here because I am going to post the recording of this live on my YouTube tomorrow in case you missed anything or you would like to rewatch. Um, so make sure you are subscribed to YouTube. Tessica Vision, same name is here. Um, if you want to send stories for videos or uh, future lives or anything, you can send them to glitches.tessicavision at gmail.com. That is also in the link in my bio. And you can also find links to my Amazon storefront to my Amazon wish list and my P.O. box if you'd like to send me anything, and to my Cameo. I think that's all the things. Um, thank you, Maddie. Extra special thank you because you are definitely number one gifter. Thank you so much for your generosity today. I super appreciate you. Yes, thank you, and I will tell Uncle Matrix that you guys are wishing him good luck and love on his surgery. Thank you so much, Maddie. I appreciate that. What are the odds you sang happy right gina i was just thinking that because i started singing oh happy day uh because jenna jenna i think i think i can't remember <laughs> said something in the chat part of it and i was like did i sing that and she said yes but i don't remember that i was singing any of it so then i started singing it and then that one was about god and jesus i'm not religious either just so everyone's aware i'm not religious sister act now <laughs> you're gonna go watch it 
I love you guys so much. And I will see you soon. I'll talk to you guys in Discord. And I hope to see you soon. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.